of inadequacy and low self-esteem resulting from an unhappy childhood. Vaughn's therapist, Dr. Susan Warner, told Onion reporters that she's pleased with her patient's progress and relieved that his long-time emotional and cognitive issues are nearly solved for good. I told him that getting healthy would take at least 100 hours of therapy, and now he'll never have to see me again. Thank God for that. That guy was a real piece of work. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to join us here. Bring up whatever's on your mind tonight with you in the studio. It's me, Ian. Cantwell. And Mark. And of course, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. You get to create the content right there on the front page and suggest show prep to us. What should we be talking about? On the radio, a lot of times we'll pick prep right from the front page of the website, but we also have other places that we can go and look. And, you know, it's been a while. And now that, uh, Chris, you're filling in tonight for Derek J., who hopefully will be back uh, next week from his jaunt to San Francisco. I'm sure he's going to have some interesting news to announce about that when he's ready. Uh, But we had talked about the Greece situation quite a bit when it was really uh, getting hot and heavy over there with the vote that happened to reject, I think 61% of uh, the voters there rejecting the austerity measures that were being demanded at the time. That We really covered it quite a bit then. But I think it's been a week or two since we've mentioned anything about what's happening in Greece. And I don't know if you've been following it at all. Oh, I'm all over this story. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So uh, I I'll, I don't know. Did they get, did I hear they were getting another bailout of like $86 billion? They more are dollars? working towards getting that right so the uh the the parliament uh recently voted to accept a a bailout package with even harsher austerity measures than the voters rejected in the referendum wait weren't these people in greece elected to reject austerity yeah, but what happened was, you know, Cyprus, the the head of the Syriza party over there, sort of, or the head of the government, uh, which was brought to power by the Syriza party, mm-hmm. um, he had this coalition of the radical left that became Syriza, and they revolted. So Sir, the Syriza party did not back him. The other parties did, and that's what happened. So you have sort of multi-party democracy going on in Greece that it's not like here with the Republicans and Democrats. You've right. got you've got center-left, center-right parties and all over the place on the spectrum. The Syrizas are the, the far-left uh, party, and they revolted when Cyprus uh, brought this to the parliament. They said absolutely not, and I was reading— So he's to- going against his own party. Oh yeah, he's going against his own party, and and they're and they're losing their minds over it. And there's even a split within the party. There's the there's now Syriza, and now there's left platform, which is the left of the radical left, <laughs> and those people are saying that they should have gone to the drachma, which is something that I had predicted while this hmm. was all going on. So, but he wants to keep uh, things going with the the eurozone. Why do you think? I mean, obviously this is speculation on your part, but why do you think he's uh, decided to leave the people who elected him behind like this? I suspect it's because when he gets into the room with some of the power players in the Europe in 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 the European Central Bank and the IMF and that sort of thing, that they're telling him things like, "Hey, we will destroy you and everyone you care about if you mm. go against us, and if you go with us." We'll give you a nice yacht later. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, this is how the payoffs go, right? <laughs> because it goes contrary to everything that they got elected on and right. everything they said leading up to it. I mean, it's it's a total it's a total about face, and he knows something that he's not telling other people because his entire premise for this entire time was we we are not going to capitulate, right? And what what came out recently, and there's a there's a lot of controversy about this, and I don't know if it's part of the story that you're looking at, is that there was a there was a plan among some of them, like Yanis. Varoufakis to to go back to the drachma. They had to have a plan B, right? They're going in and refusing the bailout plans that the European Union is is offering them. But they're they're it, they're fundamentally if they're not going back to the drachma, they are fundamentally without a plan, right? It's just they give us what we want, right? So a lot of people, myself included, sort of speculated they're planning on going back to the drachma. And if you give communists access to the printing presses, then you could plan on hyperinflation mm-hmm. not long afterwards. But um, something happened. They got Cyprus in a room somewhere and were like, changed his tune. You do not mess with us, man. So and right now he's sort of on board. He's on board with getting an extra bailout, accepting more austerity measures than previously demanded. 
and I wonder when his term is up. When is he going to be up for re-election? There is an election coming not too long from now. Um, I don't know exactly when it yeah. is, but it's less than two years, I believe. It's not like uh, it's not like we're either stuck with him for another four years, is my understanding of it. So there was, I mean, we have a long history of uh, quote-unquote communist countries. None of them are really communist, much more sort of Soviet um, in their uh, uh, structure. But... Um, these these countries didn't have hyperinflation in the past. I wouldn't disagree with you that uh, that's likely to be what happens if Greece goes to the drachma. I kind of predict that because huh, this is what happened before, right? Like they just spent without with impunity. And when you give somebody the ability to spend without impunity and the signals are um, – they're not as clear as they are in the in the area of the the euro, right? Like with the euro, you're not issuing the currency. Um, with the drachma, the Grecian authorities would be. So I think that you're right in what you'll have, which is probably uh, hyperinflation. But commies can, you know, manage a, a currency as well as any other crappy status. Yeah, right? I would I would say that you know, a, a devout commie, open Marxists and Trotskyites are going to be more prone to using the printing presses than some people who <laughs> at least purport to have free market tendencies. Right? These guys came in there now. Yes, of course. I mean, not every single country who has ever elected a communist government turned into into Zimbabwe. But <laughs> the the fact of the matter is these guys came in on the platform of we will spend more than we have and <laughs> right. and there will be no consequences for it, which is just an utterly ridiculous <laughs> Platform. Well, it seems like, I mean, that's that got them elected, right? That's what they needed to say to get elected. Many of them probably believe it. Obviously, this Cyprus guy is changing his tune whenever whoever took him into the back room and said whatever they said to him. But if there's another election coming up in a year or two, then who's to say the Greek people are not going to put another hardcore communist in there? And once again, you know, renege on any kind of it's just amazing that they're going to keep moving forward, thinking that these austerity measures are actually going to stick. The only other thing that I could see, I mean, once, you know, if the, if they're going to start implementing harsher austerity measures, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to see Greeks once again take to the streets with the Molotov cocktails flying. They right? already is- did on the idea that wasn't there a headline like a week or so ago about maybe two weeks ago at this point about people in the streets protesting some, you know, my, violence, possible Molotovs. Uh, right after the announcement that they were going to go for this this bailout. If I'm sh- I'm certain that there's been protests, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that there was some violence in it. But I have not heard of anything that was in like there was in the wake of the last bailout. Okay. Right in the wake of the last bailout, it was it was it, the place looked like a war zone. All right, I mean people were just out in the street throwing firebombs at the police and all of this stuff and. It was one of these things that really stuck out to me because, again, it was, you know, libertarians just cheering on civil unrest for the sake of civil unrest. And I'm like, look, uh, one of these uh, – you're you're going out and cheering on people who are, you know, trying to create civil unrest in the street, damaging private property and all the rest uh, because you want a government to spend more money. Libertarians, stop cheering for this yeah. nonsense. So I didn't – doesn't make sense. I haven't seen that, and I've been following the story pretty closely, but I'm certain there's maybe protests and protests often yeah. bring violence. Maybe they're waiting until – the deals finalized because it sounds like the ink isn't quite on the paper paperwork right so they they to my understanding just recently got it through their parliament and now uh-huh. it goes back to the european union and there's you know all, all types of things that are going on the only other thing that i can see happening is that this is sort of a um a measure to drag things out a little bit longer on the part of cyprus right so he could be saying okay 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 european union i'm going to go along with you and then when the austerity mm-hmm. measures hit he says well we told you before that this was too harsh we're telling you again that it's too harsh so Thanks. now we're the going to default billion. again, and then you know, and they can go through this process all over again. Right, yeah. You know, that's the only other thing I that mean, I think of. Yeah, that's a great point because if he collects that eighty-six billion, and I don't know if it'll all be given in one lump sum or if it'll be over no. a period of time. No, they're going to have some. Time. They're going to have some controls on it. The, you know, there was one thing that I was reading the the other day that you know some of the Syriza members were thinking about trying to copy over, trying to hack the tax system in order to create like a parallel banking system. Right. So right now, the European Union or the Troika, the the European Union, the European European Central Bank and the IMF, the, the three bailout, primary bailout entities. Um, they had uh, basically taken over Greece's uh, or taking um, some level of control over Greece's tax system. 
uh, in order to make sure that, you know, mm. accounting They're reasons. Get paid. Like, yeah, we're going to make sure that you're going to pay us. And so they could um, they could cause Greece significant troubles, to, to say the least. So there was some plan among certain Syriza members like, OK, we've got to hack the tax system and copy it over to create a parallel tax system so that we can continue printing taxes, uh, continue collecting. collecting taxes after the European Union sort of cuts off our access to the system. So, I mean, there's there's been a lot of different irons in the fire, if you will. All right. So there's different uh, aspects to this, one of which we've covered pretty heavily at this segment, which has been sort of the political intrigue, the Eurozone and the Greek politicians and, you know, who's agreeing to what and the $86 billion. Then there's also the level of the people on the streets. How is this affecting them? Because they're under capital controls right now. And it's there's harsh. a story here about what that's, you know, how to get out of that. How do you lift these controls is the question. We'll come back with that at 855 450 free. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com
You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We've got time for you to join us here. Chris Cantwell and I did an ambush of Chris Christie today. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that. He actually handled it fairly well by ignoring me and giving you, Chris, a you know somewhat okay answer to your question. Yeah. But we got it on video, and at some point that'll be posted over at uh, freekeen.com. So we could talk about that, but we're talking about the situation in Greece at the moment. Uh, I haven't been following it closely, but thankfully Chris has, and he is here tonight filling in for Derek J., is on his way back from San Francisco. Uh, so we'll continue with all that discussion. want to let you know how to save 20, 25%, maybe even more on Amazon. Now, here's how you do it. you got to have Bitcoin. That's step one. And we'll tell you how to get some Bitcoin here in a little bit. But if you've got Bitcoin, or even if you don't, you can go to purse.freetalklive.com and sign up for a purse account. You do it under purse.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live will get a very small portion of anything that you buy through Purse. Purse allows you to spend Bitcoin at Amazon. Normally, you can't do that. You can't go to Amazon's website and pay for stuff with Bitcoin. Nor would you really want to, anyway, because if you go through Purse... Purse, you can save 25%. You, you can save 20 25%. I'm, I save 29% on the headphones I'm wearing right now. The first uh, purchase is 15 though. Yes, that's true. I, I got I got twenty percent off on my first purchase. Is that right? Yeah. Why okay. are you special? Well, well I try. So, uh, well, I've heard they lock you down at fifteen. Maybe it, maybe it was twenty. Now it's fifteen. But they they restrict the first purchase because it's a fraud check. Basically, they right. you know they want to make sure that you're okay and you get a positive review your first time. Once you get there's that always first, something cheap on Amazon you need. Yeah. Once you get that uh, positive review, you're good to go. They'll open you up to where you can get up to fifty percent off. Now it's harder to get. 50% off because you have to wait. You're basically putting your order into a marketplace of people who want to buy Bitcoin. And these are people who want to buy Bitcoin at a, a quite a large markup. And believe it or not, it actually works. I've done a couple dozen transactions there. Go check it out. Learn more at purse.freetalklive.com. This is for real. It actually works. Purse.freetalklive.com. So, Greece, we talked about, and you've been following very closely, Chris, the uh, sort of the political situation there where there's this, you know, communist lefty party that's come into power. They were elected on the idea that uh, that they weren't going to, to kowtow to the European Union and their demand of austerity measures because, you know, they've got more than $300 billion in uh, bailout loans or whatever that they're supposed to be paying off, but they they haven't been paying off. And so the idea is, well, you need to tighten the belt, Greece. Here's what we want you to do. And they were saying no, but now they're going to say yes, apparently. Something has changed within the Greek government, and the prime minister, Cyprus is his name, has yeah. has agreed to austerity measures in order to get another 80-something billion dollars, from what I understand. So 80, 86 billion 86 euros, billion. I believe. I keep yeah. saying dollars, euros. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you get the point. There's uh, It's a bad situation. But that's just the political intrigue. There's also the, the people on the ground, the average folks of Greece, not all of whom I'm sure are communists, right? There's probably some people in there who would rather not be going through this and Certainly, you know, uh, but what's happening to them? Because we had talked previously about these capital controls, as they're called, which, as we explained uh, on previous editions of Free Talk Live, business owners in Greece have been unable or it's very difficult to pay their vendors. If they have somebody that's supplying product to them, there was like one they gave an example of one lady who's a popular florist in Athens and she can't pay her suppliers because they're sending her flowers from outside of Greece, and there are capital controls. The government has put these controls in place in Greece to supposedly keep money in the country because right now it's hard for anybody to even get uh, the euro in Greece, given that the banks have been closed, and I don't believe that they've been reopened. Have you heard anything about that? Because for last I heard, it was an indefinite closure. At this yeah, point. they they, to my knowledge, have not been reopened yet. Um, they're looking at trying to get them opened again soon. Hold on, I thought the banks were open, but now you could only do one week's worth of withdrawal instead of one day's worth of. Withdrawal. Okay, that would be news to me. I had I haven't heard that. That's what I heard um, on NPR. Okay, let's let's see if we can find out more about the current bank status. Because at first it was one day bank holiday, which went to five. Five days, which went to two weeks, which then went to indefinite. That they had no date. It's still a restriction on withdrawals. Well, they, yeah. they, they, yeah. I mean, that's that's what I mean by open, right? I mean, okay. they've had some limited access to the banks the entire time, but 
It's not banking as usual, right? No, it's not that. You ATM go, withdrawal could, limits at ATM 60 euro. was like 60 euro a day, and they might have clamped that down even further. And, of course, then they had to let, like, pensioners and that sort of thing go into the banks to That's pull right. out euros because they don't, you know, some of the older folks, they don't have ATM cards and whatnot. That's right. The first week they did allow open the banks only for pensioners to come in and withdraw 120 euros. So there's been some limited access to the banks the entire time, but they haven't, you know— Gone back to business. You can't usual, go certainly. to your bank account and withdraw anything more than a very small amount yeah, of euro. Yeah, very serious capital controls. And, of course, they talked about, and this hasn't happened yet, and it's going to come up here in this article from the AFP, uh, they have talked about doing a haircut, which is, of course, oh, a... Boy. Uh, that is a, it's a nice sounding term for stealing money from your bank account. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, the proposal's been 30%. I, I love, I love all that terminology. I mean, even bank holiday, right? Like right. that's calling, that's like calling a <laughs> mugging a surprise party or something. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So here's a story on what's it like on the ground there in Greece. How do they lift these capital controls? Because these things are affecting business big time and people's lives. AFP reporting it's just the headache that Greece's government doesn't need right now. How can it loosen the capital controls that are shielding its banks but strangling the rest of the economy? For the past month, Greece has been finally cut off, uh, financially cut off from the rest of the world. It's almost impossible for most Greeks to take money out of the country, thanks to a raft of capital control measures put in place on June 29th amid fears of a catastrophic bank run. So we're just about a month here. It's I wonder what Bitcoin's selling for in Greece right now. I bet the mm. uh, the price is higher because if you go, I mean, Bitcoin's the only way you're going to get money out of the country. That's right. For companies, the capital controls have meant waiting for a government commission to sign off on large bills owed to foreign firms, a process that has slowed payments so much that distrustful suppliers have started asking to be paid in advance. So this is mm -hmm. this is what's happening with what was originally a total prohibition from what I'd read previously on paying people outside of the country. Now apparently you can pay your bill from that company that's outside of Greece, but you have to go through some sort of government commission to get their approval. And how long does it take from submission of the uh, the bill and the check that you want to go out to them to the government commission actually approving it? Because as of the as first, long as they want. right? Because as of the first week, they said that even if the banks did go back online, and they haven't in the way that you know they should, but even if they did go back the way they were, it would take another week to process through all of these business transactions, just because they'd be backed up so badly. Mm -hmm. And that was the first week of these capital controls, and it's now been nearly a month. So. You know, basically, if you're in business, you can't pay your suppliers unless you do it up front. And then, even then, the supplier is going to have to wait <laughs> to actually get the uh, the approval from this government commission. It's crazy. A Bank of uh, Greece chief, Yanis Sturnaras, on Friday loosened the restrictions to allow banks to greenlight companies' foreign payments up to 100,000 euros. But people remain unable to open new foreign bank accounts, buy shares, or transfer large sums of money. Athens is tolerating two main exceptions to the rules. Greek students abroad can receive 5,000 euros per quarter, while citizens having medical treatment in other countries can receive up to 2,000 euros. Cash withdrawals were limited to 60 euros per day after Greeks emptied the ATMs, worried for the safety of their savings. The Greek economic minister, Georgios Stathakis, warned on July 12th that it could be several months before it is deemed safe to lift these measures completely. By the way, I don't know if you remember this, but the uh, their head ec ec uh, economic minister or whatever, he resigned a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, Yanis Varoufakis. Yeah, he got out of that sinking ship. Smart move on his part. 855, 450, free will continue. What are the capital controls that are in place right now, and how can they be lifted? It's Free Talk Live. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. 
Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. I was a pedestrian, and an asinine cop backed up and hit me. And oh, God. Knocked me down to the ground. And I said, I think we need to call the police as I'm, you know, screaming in pain. And he said, go ahead, I'm a cop, too. And he left the scene of the accident. Oh, wow. So when the police and the uh, ambulance and all the paramedics arrived to take me to the hospital, because I have knee damage now and need knee replacements to both knees because of his actions. And I told him, I said, you know, I'm a registered nurse. I work drug and alcohol rehab. This guy was drunk. I could see it. I could tell by his... You know, his actions, he was drunk. And I said, I want a blood alcohol done on him. They knew who he was. They waited six hours to go to his home to arrest him. (laughs) And, of course, by then he had sobered up. Sure. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back. More Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll free. 855 450 free. We, uh, Grant Cantwell and I, actually participated in an ambush of Chris Christie. The very rotund New Jersey governor. Uh, We can recap that for you here in a little bit. Also, of course, you can bring up anything. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. What are the capital controls that are still in place in Greece and how can they be lifted? We're talking about that. And also there's other international news of interest, including things getting worse in Venezuela as well. That's just been an absolute nightmare to uh, be observing that. And I imagine it's even worse to actually be in the middle of it. I feel awful for the... Would they finally get toilet paper and run out of food? <laughs> I believe they're uh, out of beer right now. You know, go, That's like, not the story I have, but I've heard that is the case. You're and running out of beer, I think. The government's going to be taking over more industry, apparently. We'll the tell government's going to have a heck of a problem on their hand when they run out of beer. I can tell Pro you that. ProXPN.com slash FTL is where you can go, whether you're in Venezuela or uh, Greece or in the United States. There's somebody there trying to spy on your internet communications, and it may very well be your own internet service provider. 
you can uh, stop them from being able to do that by encrypting your internet connection. Pro XPN will do that for you. In fact, they'll start you know, out for free over at proxpn.com slash FTL. proxpn.com slash FTL. You get started there for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. And then when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world, the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites as well, you can upgrade and uh, get 50% off of the regular monthly price when you buy their annual account with code FTL50. FTL like free talk live. And 50 as in 50% off. That breaks down to about 5 bucks a month, and it's good for the lifetime of your account over at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. But more of your privacy is the longer you wait. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And ProXPN, by the way, does not keep records of your online habits. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL50 for a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. We'll talk more about Venezuela on the uh, on the way here tonight. Plus, is air conditioning a conspiracy? It's a story that both uh, Chris and Mark brought in to talk about just separately. You, you weren't planning that. Uh, but back to the story about Greece, just a little bit more on what's happening there. There's capital controls that are in place. The ATM restrictions appear to still be there, although the story here says, it says cash withdrawals were limited to 60 euros per day after the Greeks emptied the ATM. So it doesn't say that they are no longer limited. So I suspect that is still in place. I don't know if we were able to confirm the story that you heard on NPR, Mark, about uh, that you can actually go into a bank and withdraw some small amount of euros at this point. Yeah. So uh, there's that. And then also, apparently, according to the story here at the AFP, announced in the throes of the crisis when Greece appeared to be teetering on the brink of a chaotic Eurozone exit, these capital controls were brought in with just one immediate concern in mind. Protect the banks. And, of course, the cost of the average folks right. in Don't Greece. Don't protect the citizenry. Protect the banks. Right, because the citizenry had to shut down businesses given that they couldn't pay their suppliers with these capital controls in place. And also, you started to see people canceling their, like the lady that was selling the flowers, for instance, she said people started to cancel their weddings. Well, duh, why would you want to come to a place like Greece to have a wedding when you can't even buy flowers? Yeah, and I imagine that uh, your your wedding gifts might not be so well when people can only pull out 60 bucks a day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, 40 billion euros have left the bank's coffers since December. And as the world waits to see whether Greece and its creditors can hammer out a bail-up worth to up to 86 billion euros, as we discussed, staving off a panicked outpouring of the country's cash remains a paramount concern. According to Diego Iscaro, an economist at consultancy IHS, the problem with capital controls is they're easy to implement, but very difficult to lift. Or as Moody's uh, analyst puts it, quote, confidence in the banks is lost quickly, but it takes time to restore it. Elsewhere in Europe, Iceland is a perfect example of this. The country is only now beginning to lift capital controls that have been in place since 2008. Wow. Cyprus as well, or Cyprus rather, has, uh, Cyprus is the prime minister. <laughs> Cyprus has only just uh, lifted the restrictions introduced in 2013 when nearly bankrupt. It was forced to impose a so-called bail-in, which saw people with large bank deposits lose a hefty chunk of their savings. Quote, even Cyprus, with a government resolutely engaged in the reforms, a process which has gone well, well, says some economists, took two years to come out of them. In Greece's case, the negotiations have been fraught, to say the least. When they say it went well, it's important to point out that Cyprus applied what they called a haircut. And That's a haircut what, yeah, they is were a just talking about. really nice word for <laughs> they found, a, they, they came up with an arbitrary amount of money that people 10, would have. 10,000 or 100,000 euro. People with 100,000 euro in the bank or more, they then took some, what was the percentage? I believe it was 40 something percent back in Cyprus. That wow. sounds accurate. I want to say 47. 47 yeah. percent? All right. 47 percent of their just money. Just come take half your stuff. Right. That's right. They just took your money. They just take their money. You know, they worked hard their it's whole lives. It's for the good of the country, Mark. For that money, and that's it. Or at least for the good of the banks. In Greece's case, the negotiations have been fraught, to say the least, and several of its Eurozone partners and creditors have openly cast doubt on the government's ability to stick to its promises. Many Greeks Me fear too. that they, too, will be forced to endure the so-called bail-in. But analysts, that's the other word for the haircut mark, the bail-in. So bail rather in, than uh, bailing out... They don't want to uh, use that haircut, haircut term now. It's uh, It's mm. been sullied. So I guess every country where they just go steal people's money, they're going to have to come up with a new term for it. 
So analysts say such a move would be more painful in Greece. And we had seen uh, news headlines talking about a 30% cut out of people's bank accounts. But the, uh, the amount that would trigger it would be much lower. In Greece, they were talking about eight thousand euro rather than a hundred thousand. Oh man, which is what it was. In you know, I don't know what level of speculation that is as far as who the experts were that were claiming that, because obviously it hasn't happened yet. But many Greeks are afraid that they will also be forced to endure one of these bail-ins, and uh, I'm afraid they will too. Cyprus, uh, their bail-in was easier politically because it targeted affected foreigners who had parked large sums in the tax haven. The situation in Greece is very different, wrote economist Francis Coppola on her blog. Most large depositors have removed their money already. The remaining un because they saw this coming. The remaining uninsured deposits, about 30% of the deposit base, are mainly the working capital of Greek businesses. Mm. She added that, quote, bailing these in would be far more destructive for the Greek economy than the bail-in of the large depositors was for Cyprus. The Greek economy is already forecast to contract by 3% this year, and the S&P rating agency uh, said that, but extended capital controls in a big bail-in could constrict activity even further. Yeah, I mean, the, the what you mentioned about in Cyprus, you know, is largely foreign depositors, and this mm-hmm. was, it was a thing that not everybody saw coming, right? So, so Cyprus calls this bank holiday, and people are sort of caught off guard by it, right? Right. But... As soon as Syriza got elected, I wrote back in January. In January, I wrote an article titled, out. Greece Commits Economic Suicide. And I said, you're going to have bank runs. This is going to be a disaster, right? Oh, wow. You're and, right. And a lot of people saw it. And then, um, you know, uh, uh, before they even went to referendum, I, I said, uh, I, I wrote the... Uh, uh, Cerise's end gain, hyperinflation of the drachma, right? Mm-hmm. So these are things that a lot of people saw coming, and the smart money was getting out of Greek banks well before the right. bank well before the bank holiday. Right, so, and you're just a guy who's in Keene, New Hampshire, observing this from you know the way you're observing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, I mean, people did see it coming. The smart yeah. money got their money out of the Greek banks a long time <laughs> ago. The only people who used to have money in Greek banks are people who were like, oh, I have perfect faith in the in my <laughs> communist government to straighten this mess out, <laughs> or or like they said here, the local businesses. So maybe they don't have faith in the communist government, but they don't know any other way to do business but without a bank account, right? You know, they yeah. don't have Bitcoin. And not everybody has that yet. A very, very small portion of the people in Greece, I and imagine. And very do. few people do business entirely in Bitcoin. So you'd still have to have a bank account anyway. Yeah, exactly. Of course, if you have your money in other places, then you'd be insulated from that. Um, and, you know, having Bitcoin is a way to prevent your wealth being confiscated from you. My, anytime- my understanding of it was even like, even if you're like a Greek resident, like you can even have like, you could do a lot of your banking through like a German bank, right? Really? And you would have actually avoided a lot of this. And I, this is a very limited understanding of it. So don't take it's it as financial true. advice. But you could be, you know, that's the, it's sort of the whole European Union, the centralized mm-hmm. currency union, the banking system all working together that way. Um, people were able to sort of do things that way and avoid some amount of this. So let me ask a question into ignorance here, since uh, you're having, I've kind of wondered, European Union citizens, as I understand it, can move anywhere in the European Union. So it's like we're talking about Greek, uh, Greek citizens as though they're stuck in Greece, but they're not. All right, we'll get back to that question here in a moment. 855-450 free if you want to chime in here. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. 
We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level 3 and level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live. Join us here. We're talking international financial intrigue. What's happening with Greece right now? And then coming up, Venezuela, it's getting worse there as well. It's, this is sort of an educational experience for those of us who are fortunate enough to not be in the middle of it. I imagine it's educational in a different way for the people that are actually there experiencing, in the case of Venezuela, long lines at uh, grocery stores and other places just to buy basic goods. And in Greece, where you've got lines at ATMs, or at least you did have them, I'd imagine not so much now. It's been a good month since the capital controls were put in place, but people still have to go to those ATMs if they want to get money out of their bank account, uh, which is restricted still to 60 euros a day. And there's no immediate plan to lift those capital controls. It's uh, it's pretty bad, I'll tell you gotta, that. It's got to be very difficult to try to do that because, I mean, it, 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 once you put the capital controls in place, then people lose faith in the banking system. So you tr you you institute capital controls in order to prevent a run on the banks. Right, And They've then done what that. will happen is this, the moment that you remove the capital controls is run you will have a run on the banks <laughs> because people know that the jig is up, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, Mark, had, Mark had asked before we went to break, he asked about um, uh, intra-European uh, immigration, whether or not Mm -hmm. Greeks can just go to other places. 
And I just uh, I looked that up real quick, and this is from migrationpolicy.org. It says, uh, citizens of the European Union are free to cross intra-European b- borders in search of work and education and opportunities, a higher standard of living, or even a more desirable climate. Germans work in the finance sector in London and Luxembourg. Young Lithuanians work in fast food restaurants in Ireland. Italians study in British universities, and Swedes retire in sunny Spain. It goes on for a while, but there's basically they can travel across uh, the borders within the European Union. So no. it wouldn't be a tr- uh, difficult matter to go and open a German bank account. Then. No, it wouldn't. And why? Is, I mean, I guess I just have to ask myself then: Why are the if the if things stink in Greece so bad? Why don't the Greeks move someplace else? The only the only thing that I can imagine about it, and I don't know exactly what the details are. This is something that I'm sort of making up off the top of my head. But the 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 European Union will all the countries within it will all work with each other on say the the tax system and that sort of thing, right? So you can't go avoid. Greek taxes by going to Germany or something like that, right? They're all going to work with each other to make sure their tax laws are enforced. So if yeah, there's Greece isn't known for its high taxes or wasn't known for its high taxes, um, I it mean, it's just known for a bad economy. Well, it's it it had high taxes before, and part of its new austerity measures is even higher taxes. They're doubling certain taxes course, in some cases. I also wonder why people um, stay in states where their economies aren't as good and don't go to other states it's where comfortable. their economies are better. I mean, look, we have a tough time recruiting 20,000 liberty-loving people to move to New Hampshire. That's a hard process as it is, and New Hampshire is a prosperous spot, excuse me, prosperous place. One of the most, uh, you know, there's, there are more jobs available here in New Hampshire than a lot of the states in in the U.S. And well, what kind of jobs though is really whatever. what it seems If you to need a job, then away. having a job is better than having no yes, job. Yes, if you want to work at a cashier position in a retail spot, then you can certainly get a job in Keene. Uh, yep. You know, there are other industries in other places, but, um, you know, I, I frequently find I, I'm always talking to people who are interested in moving. And Didn't this you just the- ask a question on your Facebook page the other day? You know, who's thinking about moving to New Hampshire? Yeah. Has somebody posted that on another Facebook gr- group. Just to point out, there was so many people with all kinds of excuses as to why they don't want to move. It's comfortable to stay in place, isn't it? I mean, it's that's yeah. the easier life. It seems like, at least. It is. I mean, there's a legitimate, depending on what your trade is, I mean, it can be difficult to find a job in New Hampshire. Sure, right? I mean, or look, move a business. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I mean, if, if you're working in New York in the financial industry, then to come to New Hampshire and try to find a, you know, a direct right. transfer of what you're doing is not going to be an easy thing to do, right? Uh, you work in certain... Um, IT fields, that sort of thing. I mean, if you're a programmer and you could just program independently from wherever in the world, it's very IT's easy to live in New better in New Hampshire than, than a lot of places, from what I'm told. There's the so, supposed tech corridor of Manchester, Concord, Nashua. There's a fair amount of IT jobs there, which is why you see a lot of Free State Project participants, a lot of people who move here to New Hampshire are IT people, and they, they don't seem to have a problem getting jobs here. So I think that's a relatively good marketplace. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, there's a lot of people working in New York City that wouldn't necessarily be able to transition their career, uh, perhaps in the way they would want to. I know when I came here in 2012, I to get a job in the IT business, I would have had to take a pretty serious pay cut. And I was a pretty well, sure. I was a pretty well paid guy, like middle management position in New York in and New that York. sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna take a pay cut going from a lot of things in New York to New Hampshire, but yeah, also the cost still of living. increase your increase your quality of living at the same time. But yeah, but and also wouldn't it lower your cost of living, right? Because you can get more for, you know, a thousand dollars here as far as like a house or an apartment or something Certainly. than you could in, you know, Manhattan, for instance. Yeah, Manhattan housing versus <laughs> New Hampshire housing is <laughs> ridiculously worlds apart. Cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's probably true of you know other parts of New York City as well. So, uh, so you know, you're welcome to comment on Greece. I think we've pretty much covered you know two sides of things here: the political intrigue side, and then also the people of Greece. They still have to deal with these capital controls that are in place. They're still there. They don't have any plans to leave most of them. That's where their families and their jobs well, whatever jobs are left uh, that's where those things are. And of course a lot of them are on welfare so they don't want to go anywhere. Oh that's the thing. A lot of these people are dependent you know, one of the articles I read many of the people in Greece are dependent on the generosity of the state which is just a ridiculous (laughs) statement. And the only other thing that I will (laughs) add to the conversation we've been having here is what will follow. You mentioned you know, sort of the political circumstances um, surrounding the bailout package, but you're going to see in in Europe a call for greater political centralization, right? There's been um, the the European Central Bank and the European Union have do not have a great deal of political power. They can't generally go in and alter the economic policies of member states. 
And that is something that a lot of people have criticized, that you created a monetary union before you created a political, a political union. Okay. So yeah. if you're going to have some country that's going to send wildly, rapidly out of control, and you're going to be reliant upon the same central bank as all these other countries that are acting fiscally responsible, well, now you've got a serious or problem. comparably <laughs> fiscally responsible. Comparably <laughs> fiscally responsible, yes. Then you then you find yourself in this position where, like, okay, well, you know, normally the, the central bank and the, uh, the, the economic power is is in the same place and now that's not the case in europe right now so point. there's calls for greater centralization politically which uh i think is the exact opposite of a solution well um and but this is it when you look at it though i mean many people will say for instance they'll say some state that has uh that is uh, revenue or uh, tax negative is what they call it um a state that takes in a donor state or excuse me a uh uh, I can't remember what the other term is, a state that takes in more tax revenue from the federal government than mm -hmm. it pays out. And then they'll say, then they'll mention, let's say, New York State, which is a, a donor state. So they have, they pay out more taxes than they take in from the federal government. And they'll look at they'll look at this and they say, hey, look, in, here in the United States where we have both a political and a uh, monetary union, the more wealthy states take care of the less uh, wealthy states, and everything's fine. Why doesn't uh, Germany just kick out for Greece? And in many cases, the Germans are just like, the Greeks are irresponsible, and the Greeks are like, we, we've been tricked by this, this system, you know, and it wasn't us, it was the politicians, or whatever the complaint is. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's a bad uh, union but it's like the worst kind of union they could have chosen. But, but what you have, what you have in the United States that's different from what you have in the European Union is that you have, um, you know, the, your 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 high up economic regulators are in the federal government, right? You've got you've got your Treasury Department, you've got your um, the Federal Reserve System, you've got um, you know well, they're the, not at, the the, at the at the Federal Trade Commission. I mean, any number of different regulatory agencies at the federal level that are dictating economic policy for the entire country. The federal government runs the entire banking system of the entire 50 United States. And so uh, uh, another state can have more financial restrictions than the federal government does, but they can't have less, right? So the federal government really does, you know, have an iron fist over the economy of the United States, and that is not what you have in the European U Union, that they really don't have a lot of say over the economic policies of these member states. Right. And so w what you're seeing with the bailout package is they're trying to attach these conditions to the bailout, right? right? They're saying, you want the bailout, then you have to do this, and we will pay you to do this. It's almost like we have in the United States with um, uh, the drinking age. Right. That yeah. They're like, we'll give you highway funds if you increase your drinking age to 21. But there's right. not actually any federal mandate on it. So what it, maybe it will result in is the breakup of the European Union at some point. Right? Or it may result in the cohesion of the European or Union further centralization. into one, uh, you know, European, United European states. Ugh. Yeah, I was looking at there's a, they're actually, I think, looking at a referendum on staying in or getting out in Greece. Britain. Oh, go Britain. In Britain. Yeah, yeah. Britain also. Uh, and that's interesting. Some ways off. And I don't think it's that controversial of a measure. Well, they I never think. really got rid of the pound, did they? No, no. they still have the pound. Um, so that's that's still going on and there's there's a referendum in Europe. I don't know exactly when it is, but I don't think it's a very controversial thing. I think there's every expectation is that it will pass. Meaning they will leave the European they Union. They will stay in the European oh, I'm sorry. Union, right? Stay so that, yeah, so I my understanding of it and I and I don't have the most thorough understanding of it. But my understanding is that some at least some member states like Britain have these things every so often where they decide whether or not they're going to stay. Yeah, I mean, I can understand why countries want to get out, especially Britain. Britain's not even really European uh, by their standards. Venezuela has nothing to do with the Eurozone, but things are really bad there. And now their government is going to be forcing farmers to hand over their produce to the state. We'll tell you more about that coming up here. I'm sure that'll work just splendidly. They're coming for your tomatoes, yep. folks. It's Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Hey guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You, Me, and BTC, which, which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin-related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. How fast are Allegra gel caps? It's raking the leaves and loving it fast. How strong are Allegra gel caps? I'm running with my favorite workout partner, Strong. 
Non-drowsy Allegra gel caps give you noticeable relief of your toughest allergy symptoms. It starts working in just one hour, two times faster than Claritin's first dose, and stays strong for 24 hours. It's saying yes to pick up football with the guys strong. Allegra gel caps. Nothing's faster, nothing's stronger. Among OTC oral antihistamines. Use only as directed. Visit Allegra.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,090 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $290. Antiwar.com reports, since the late 2001 U.S. invasion and occupation of the country and the subsequent creation of the current Afghan government, the Taliban moved from the role of a mostly recognized government to insurgency. With fledgling peace talks in Pakistan and China, the Taliban may be preparing to undergo another transition. 13 plus years into the war, the Taliban holds considerable territory across Afghanistan and continues to command support across several regions. Analysts thus believe that any deal resulting from these talks is going to have to include some significant power sharing with the Taliban if it is going to end the fighting. Afghanistan's been in more or less non-stop war for decades now since the Soviet invasion, and at the end of every round there must come a reckoning in which enemies come to some sort of uneasy settlement of the ongoing conflict. The difficulty of this is reflected in how many times Afghanistan has gone through peace deals only to return to fighting soon thereafter. The U.S. imposed system in Afghanistan, though, seems like it's going to have to get used to the idea of the Taliban playing the role of a political party with significant regional influence and right in the midst of the political mainstream. Afghanistan's existing government is already heavily divided, and the Taliban's unity could allow it to consolidate more power in future elections if it participates. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports in a rare weekend session, the U.S. Senate made a couple of moves on Sunday to keep President Barack Obama's signature health care law on the books and resurrect a federal credit agency after it remained dormant for 30 days. The Export-Import Bank of the United States operated through June 30th, but shut down after that. Sunday's move in favor of reopening the agency is expected to send the proposal to a far more divided House of Representatives this week. The Senate voted 67 to 26 on the measure, which was attached to a three-year highway and infrastructure bill expected to pass this week. The Senate, though, still needs to finalize a final version of the proposal reauthorizing the bank's reopening. If the bank does reopen, analysts believe it will be a major blow to conservative Republicans who believe the agency is an unnecessary element of the federal government's fiscal apparatus. Jay Timmons, president of the National Association of Manufacturers, said, with more than 60 export credit agencies in enabling our foreign competitors to seize opportunities away from workers, it's critical that Congress restores this important tool for American exports. It wasn't clear Sunday whether the House would take up the issue, as it may not even bring the proposal to the floor for a vote. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports firefighters made progress Sunday against three wildfires burning in Montana and California, aided by cooler temperatures overnight. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection set ablaze in the Sierra foothills near Lake Tahoe in California was burning rapidly toward the north despite calming overnight, and evacuation orders remained in place for several communities. Southwest of Sacramento, near California's storied wine country, the 6,900-acre rag fire was 60% contained, and evacuation orders had been lifted. In Montana, a wildfire at Glacier National Park along the west side of St. Mary Lake was 20% contained on Sunday morning. The so-called Reynolds Fire covered about 3,100 acres at mid-morning Sunday, prompting the closure of an 18-mile section of Going to the Sun Road in the park near the St. Mary Visitor Center. However, officials said that a majority of the park was unaffected by the fire and remained open to the public. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shortly after having sexual intercourse with a prostitute earlier this afternoon, local man Jacob Reynolds told reporters that he never expected the experience would bring him to new heights of emotional and spiritual fulfillment. I was convinced that having sex with a complete stranger behind my wife's back would leave me feeling drained and empty on the inside, but... My self-esteem is through the roof. Reynolds, who said he paid $150 for a 30-minute block of time, said that his moderate expectations for the encounter were instantly surpassed by what turned out to be a deeply personal sexual communion that transported him to a new plane of emotional intimacy. I've never felt a stronger sense of spiritual connection. When our bodies met, there was an immediate sense of familiarity and comfort that just washed over me. I think it was the most meaningful experience of my life. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Kicking off hour number two of Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and join us here. We've been talking about Greece, still to come, Venezuela, things, of course, getting worse there. And once it starts to get bad in these socialist countries, it's not going to get better until something drastic occurs, I suspect. And You can't keep doing the same thing you've done over and over again and expect different results. Yeah, by the way, with you in the studio tonight here on Free Talk Live, it's me, Ian. Cantwell. And King Mark the First. We're going to get back into, or we'll get into the story about Venezuela here, where they are now taking people's produce so there have been constant state takeovers there of various different industries. We're seeing now more state in, in uh, involvement in the produce uh, the producing of food, which, of course, as we know, is hard to find there. So now the state's going to take it over. I imagine it's going to make it even more hard to find. But first, we go to Michael in Longview, Texas, to start things out this hour. Michael, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Hey there. Um, I have a, quick, uh, a couple quick questions about Pork Fest. Porkfest, the Porcupine um, Freedom Festival. It's we go there every year. Yearly event put on by the Free State Project here in New Hampshire to sort of showcase what it's like to be around people who care about freedom. What about it? Um, uh, I know you'll, this year y'all had that video about the the tax guys trying to come and you know collect the taxes. Um, my question is about: uh, are, Have y'all ever had any other government agents try to you know come into Porkfest? And what's happened with that? There was a couple of years, two or three years ago, I think it was like maybe 2011, uh, so several years ago now, I guess, at this point, there were some liquor commission agents who came in apparently undercover, and there were some people that were openly selling alcohol in that particular year, and they were not threatened directly by the agents. The agents in that case went after the park's owner and demanded that he kind of get that situation under control. So the park's owner then talked to the Porcupine Freedom Festival organizers and told them, look, you know, we can't have any open sale of alcohol here because they are going to steal my alcohol license if that continues to happen. 
So they put the pressure on the park owner. That, of course, doesn't mean that there won't be people selling alcohol at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It just means that it won't be sold openly. Nobody's going to put it uh, out on Front Street that they've got alcohol for sale. So there are still things like that that happen. It's just a little more behind the scenes. Does Rogers have a liquor license? Apparently they do. Apparently they might sell some beer or something in that. Uh, maybe it's just like a, I don't know. I, guess you I have not seen them selling any alcohol at Rogers Campground before. Uh, okay, that's, that's something... just what I heard. I've never looked real close in their uh, in their store. They get a little convenience store inside Rogers. Yeah, and I've never they might sell beers in there. Yeah, I don't that's think what I'm that thinking. they do. Okay, I but... guess when I say liquor license, I meant beer and wine, maybe. But in know. any case, they would have gone after him one way or the other for whether it's for selling without a license or for going after whatever license he does have. Well, he wouldn't have been the one selling in the park, right? Those would have been the people that were You're facilitating. He could have claimed he didn't know conspiracy to commit. Well. Not necessarily. I mean, he could he could claim ignorance, but now, of course, they brought it to his attention. He wouldn't be able to, to yeah. claim ignorance from that point forward. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Uh, I've kind of presumed that y'all prefer that, you know, the state doesn't show up at Porcupine uh, Freedom Festival, you know, that y'all would prefer to, you know, handle things internally, right? Oh, obviously. I mean, Generally yeah, let's, the case. let's keep the state away. I mean, there was one year when the police drove through, and this was many years ago, probably five years ago at least, the police drove through the park because they made a regular habit of doing that. They had an agreement with the park's owner that they would do that, you know, throughout the year, uh, throughout the time people are there in the park, is you know, drive through once in a while just to, you know, as part of their patrol. Well, when they did that at Porkfest, they got their car surrounded by a dozen people very quickly uh, with video cameras, including myself. And then it was after that that the Porkfest organizers talked to the park's owner. And he then told the police they are not to come through the park during the Porcupine Freedom Festival. So that was a success. And yeah, obviously, liberty-minded people would prefer to solve their own problems without the state if they can avoid it. But of course, if things get real bad, then you may need to call the monopoly provider of services in certain instances, as we've done here in Keene on some occasion. So uh, I wouldn't say that libertarians are 100% against utilizing the state. It's just they try not to. Right. I mean, they have a monopoly on force, so right. if you need to use force, you have to, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, but, um, of course. What I'm, what I'm, yeah, um, what I'm trying to uh, kind of get into is, um, you know, how long do you think it's going to be until some agent provocateur comes in? You know, like thirty of them, and you got fifteen versus fifteen, and you know, they that justifies their reason to bring in the government, and then every year after. What do you mean when you say an agent provocateur? What is your idea that that person well, would do? Uh, maybe kind of incite some violence against, you know, the other 15 people, and then there's some huge brawl. You're saying the – hold on. You're saying that the 15, 15 people would be agents and the other 15 would also be agents, so they would be fighting one another? Uh, yeah. That seems pretty of, yeah. Un unrealistic to me. I don't know. I mean, it's not like it's never been done. I think so. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just don't see. I mean, in see... Kent State, uh, it was government agents throwing rocks at, at government agents, the uh, yeah. the National Guard. I the mean, people at things... Kent State were angry as hell, though. I mean, this was this is a party, a group of party people in the middle of the They woods. also didn't have security on site, which the Porcupine Freedom Festival does. But there's an article out. Um, somebody made a blog post that Porkfest is going to be raided in the next three years. Okay. And, um, I, you know, I mean. What was that, a couple of years ago that it came It was out? a couple of years. And it, it, so far, his time frame isn't up, but it's uh, the clock's a ticking for mm -hmm. his prediction. Um, and and it wouldn't surprise me that that would be the case. Um, I think that it's pretty Pollyanna-ish to uh, assume that the government is never going to descend upon the Porcupine Freedom Festival uh, when essentially you know the, the the nose is being thumbed at them over and over again. Yeah, I don't know a, what it's going to look like. We have a publicly like. advertised anti-government party <laughs> and, yeah. and a bunch of people are there and i mean you've got to assume that there are already undercover agents at yeah, Porkfest, right that seems pretty obvious i mean there was one time i uh, maybe it was 2013 or 2012 when i was there i'm no longer welcome at the event speaking of calling the police they threatened to call the police on well, me if I, I would welcome you chris but um the uh uh there was a guy who was selling shirts that said i'm a fed don't you wish it was that easy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a problem at Porkfest sometimes with this I'm the or who's the Fed game where people who are acting very strange, as libertarians are known to act sometimes and uh, per perhaps antisocial or acting in very, you know, dangerous ways, like one guy mishandling a gun seemingly almost on purpose. There have been a lot of weird instances of 
people who have been very questionable. And it, you know, it just results in kind of a witch hunt, which I don't think is very productive. It was actually the first year this year that I never heard any of the who's the Fed stuff. I didn't hear any of those rumors flying around. And so I was really refreshed that that was happening. Yeah, they're obviously there. But, you know, you probably shouldn't be selling uh, drugs openly to strangers if you want to avoid you know, the federal government know, knowing about that. Uh, also, probably you shouldn't be plotting any violence, uh, period. I, th- I don't think you should, but uh, you certainly shouldn't be plotting any violence with the guy next door to you at the campsite. You know, that's just there's two good suggestions to avoid agents provocateur. But as far as your idea that they're going to send 30 cops to Porkfest and they're going to start a gang fight in the middle of, uh, you know, the, the field, that just doesn't seem like it's going to fly. I mean, the people that are standing around aren't going to join the fight. They're going to try to break it up. Well, I'll tell you what, it'll be easier to do now than it has been in previous years because I heard this year they were they were making guys um, put the um, the empty chamber indicators in their in their long guns. So guys who had rifles hmm. were forced to put this orange piece of plastic in their in their weapons. Otherwise, wow, I didn't see security that. would hassle them, which I thought was hilarious because it's just giving into the gun control nonsense of uh, assault weapons because you're a, you could still walk around with a loaded handgun. Was there photographic evidence of that? Because I didn't notice it. I and mean, not to say I was looking closely for it, but um, I did. I wasn't on yeah you know but i was talking to people outside of the event and i was huh. like what's that piece of orange plastic sticking out of your oh, rifle you actually saw it oh yeah 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 oh, several okay. guys who came out to talk to me were carrying you know semi-automatic rifles and i'm like what is with this and they're like oh well pork fest security says that we have to have these empty chamber indicators in our rifles so wait this would that mean that they couldn't uh rack one into the chamber that that blocks the chamber in you would way? have to they, they it means that they don't have one in the chamber so mm-hmm. they're gonna have to pull that that indicator out and then they're going to I have see. to cock the weapon and then they you know and then they're ready to rock and roll but normally speaking like look for you to for you to go start a violent conflict at pork fest it'd be a death sentence right because everybody yeah, has guns armed. so what are you gonna do a bunch of you yeah, yeah, 15 guys come in there and try to start a riot and then uh you know what they get shot yeah that's not gonna go anywhere i wouldn't say they would well, unless they pulled out guns i would guess they probably would try to manhandle them to stop them before pulling you know before shooting anyone uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not so worried about that, Michael. I thank you for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. 855 450 free. I think if there are agents provocateur, they're going to try to be working a little more subtly at Porkfest. This isn't like a biker gang party. It's a bunch of libertarians. More coming up. Free talk live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? 
The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial us up. Toll free, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Whether you want to comment on Greece or Venezuela or whatever happens to be on your mind, we'll go to a story here about the workplace. Chris Cantwell and Mark actually both happen to have the same piece of show prep tonight about a conspiracy to air condition the workplace. It's apparently about the patriarchy. We'll explain that here (laughs) in a little bit. But I also want to let you know about a new app that I've downloaded on my smartphone. And I would recommend that if you are an activist, if you are a neighborhood watch group, if you are a medical worker, any kind of emergency responder, you should get Cell 411. Now, right now, it's only available for Android. It's coming soon for iPhone, from what I understand. I believe the the Apple takes longer to approve (coughs) apps in their store. So I'm not sure when the iPhone app is going to come out, but it's in the pipe to come out on the iPhone or the iOS store. What it does is it's a decentralized micro-social network that allows users to manage, create, and respond to alerts and emergencies in real time. So you open up cell 411, you punch uh, you know, one button, it comes up with a, several options that you can send out, this alert that you can send out to your friends, your family members, everybody else that you know that has cell 411. So maybe you're being pulled over by the police, maybe you need medical help, perhaps you've got a, a breakdown of your car. Your cop blocking, for instance. There are several options on here that you can send out these alerts to your friends. And I've tested this, and it actually works. First time, first program they've released, it's it's working. And I'm really excited about Cell 411. It's great, whether you're an activist or, again, just Neighborhood Watch, or just your family, just your family members and your friends and, and neighbors. You can send alerts in real time with your exact location. No more wondering about where somebody is when they're sending an alert. And you can also respond to your alerts in real time. So if you get a, an alert from a friend saying they're broken down, you can actually say, okay, I'm on that. And then it'll let them know Mark is coming to their aid. Uh, so you'll receive detailed directions to the location where your friends are located and in need for help. So go to uh, go and get Cell 411. It's through the Google Apps Store, the Google Play Store, I guess they call it. I think it's $0.99, cents um, so- and it's well worth it. Do you need the approval of Google and Apple to have an app work on their phones? 
Um, I don't think Google is as tightly controlled as Apple because there's a lot of software for Google, and it seems like you can just sort of put stuff up there a lot easier mm -hmm. than Apple. Apple seems to have some sort of auditing. I'm not sure exactly what that entails. Okay. But, it's pretty yeah. easy to get an app into the Google Play Store. There's definitely right. some screening that goes on with the with the Apple uh, App Store. And that's okay. for better or for worse. I mean, some could argue that the Apple screening helps keep poor quality apps out, um, and there certainly are plenty of poor quality uh, Google apps. Yeah, no or, question about or it. Android apps. Not only are there poor quality ones, but there are also some real questionable ones. I remember accidentally downloading one years ago that turned out to be a phishing program for an instant messenger app. It was one of those instant messenger like multi apps where you could instant message on Google and you can mm -hmm. instant message on Yahoo and AIM all in the same app. Well, apparently they were using that app to steal people's passwords. So you do have to, when you're on mm -hmm. the Android Play Store, you do have to pay attention to reviews and you know who the manufacturer is and you know what kind of reputation do they have so it's more much more of an open marketplace with google as opposed to apple which is very restricted yep no doubt about i that. figured you'd have been swept up in some kind of like grinder scam or something no i've never used grinder <laughs> it's not my thing uh cell 411 as in c e l l cell 411 go look for it on the android play store i've got a copy of it i recommend you do as well um so you let's get to the story about venezuela the uh Telegraph has it, telegraph.co.uk. Their embattled government, writes Harriet Alexander, has taken the drastic step of forcing food producers to sell their produce to the state in a bid to counter the ever-worsening shortages. Farmers and manufacturers who produce milk, pasta, oil, rice, sugar, and flour have been told to supply between 30% and 100% of their products mm. to the state stores. So... It is this is is this a news story or Atlas Shrugged? <laughs> this is real. It was posted uh, less than a week ago. Fresh news, basically, from Venezuela. And, of course, as you may recall, it was the Venezuelan government who took over grocery chains uh, like a year or two ago. So this is a relatively new development there. Yeah, when you're nationalizing grocery stores, that's it. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. On. Uh, I've also been hearing that high-profile businessmen have been disappearing and no longer servicing the muggles. <laughs> By disappearing, you mean they're leaving Venezuela? They're going to Galt's Galt. It's a reference to uh, the Ayn Rand novel. Uh, yeah, see, I've never good. read it. Couldn't tell you. I did. I, mean, I didn't find it to be anywhere near as uh, uh, interesting of a read as uh, Fountainhead, but, you know, lots Shortages, of people disagree with me. rationing. And queues outside of supermarkets have become a way of life for Venezuelans, but uh, there was actually news... That I heard that they were actually forcing the lines to not be outside of the, the supermarkets anymore. You're not allowed to be standing in line out here because people can take <laughs> pictures of you. And then someone might figure out that things are screwed up here. They're, of course, anybody who's paying attention to the news in Venezuela already knows that. Yeah, their isolated country battles against rigid currency controls and a shortage of U.S. dollars, making it difficult for Venezuelans to find imported goods. Pablo Barabiar, a president of the Venezuelan Food Industry Chamber, said the order was illogical, damaging to Venezuelan consumers, saying, quote, taking products from the supermarkets and shops to hand them over to the state network doesn't help in any way, and problems like speculating will only get worse because the foods will be concentrated precisely in the areas where the resellers go. He pointed to statistics showing that two-thirds of hoarders, or bacaqueros, giant ants, as they are nicknamed in Venezuela, buy their goods from the three state-owned chains to resell them at a profit, saying consumers will be forced to spend more time in queues, which is a line, given that the goods will be available in fewer stores. The state owns 7,245 stores compared to more than 113,000 that are in private hands. So they're they're blaming speculators? Is that that's the... You know, um, Walter Block does a good job of this in uh, defending the undefendable. He talks about the, the speculator and people say, oh, you're so bad because you you sell food at a higher price during a famine or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's also that they are actually making sure that people don't starve. Like they're going to go and collect these resources and then they're going to try to sell them according to the price that the market will bear when these products are not available to people. Well, I think what he I mean, he. He's definitely pointing the finger at some of these speculators, but at the same time, his complaint is 
that the government is centralizing the location of the food, so the speculators go and they get to it first before anybody else can. Naturally, that's right. what they're going to do, right? I mean, the, the people are going to <laughs> the people can't stop business from going on in prisons, ladies and gentlemen. Right? You go to anybody who's ever been locked up can tell you that you could buy a lot of things that these people don't want you to buy when you're literally behind steel cages, and they think that they're going to do this to entire national economies, and it's going to somehow pan out. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Consumers will be forced to spend more times in lines given the goods will be available in fewer stores. The state, again, owns 7,000 compared to over 113,000 in private hands. Mr. Barabiar said that many of the private shops were in densely populated areas, meaning that people will now be forced to make longer journeys to the state stores. The chamber has asked the government for a meeting to discuss the plan, which they say they were not informed of. He said that, quote, this does absolutely nothing to help with shortages. And he's absolutely right about that. Giving the government the produce of the country so they can distribute it exclusively is going to make things worse. Not for the government officials, though. That will ensure that the government agents are, of course, well-fed, while the rest of the country will have to wait in longer lines and get their food from even fewer locations thanks to this confiscation, which is only, I'm sure, just beginning. It's 30% of some foods, up to 100% of others. And you can imagine that's only going to increase over time. 855 450 free. You can take control here of Free Talk Live. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level three and level three A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Psalm 31 3. We are Fortress Survival LLC.com. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockItPocket.com. Enhancing health and privacy. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipe, the hot girls and the inspirational sunrise memes free talk lives post pass by your news feed like them comment it gives us more exposure if you don't see our posts click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications it's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further i know you're busy but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com on free talk live we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was 
kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Talk Live, watching a video taken in a Venezuelan supermarket. The shelves are just decimated. Uh, and I can't, well, you can probably see some of this. It's a little a little bit blurry, but I mean, decimated. just, oh, sorry about that. Try one more time. Decimated does not do this story justice. Yeah. I mean, decimated, decimated means to cases. divide by 10 or something to that yeah. effect. And, and this is, uh, this is, uh, and there's nothing there. Yeah. So, I mean, you've, you've touched on one of my little pet peeves. I have, um, when it comes to vocabulary, I have so many peeves. It's a peeves zoo. Um, decimated, <laughs> in fact, is what uh, they would do to troops. Romans are um, famous for it, but it's certainly been done, done elsewhere, is, is that in order to uh, institute, um, you know, the kind of uh, behavior they wanted to institute, the, the worst punishment is basically they go by um, they count off to ten and kill the every t- every tenth man. Yeah. Man, so it's to destroy hmm. a tenth of it. So if you <laughs> if the if the store <laughs> shelves had a had ninety percent of the things that they're supposed to have on the shelves, they would be decimated. <laughs> but when they have nothing left, they it's are great, just completely destroyed. <laughs> it's a great word, yeah. and it has come to mean destroyed. Yeah, and it's fine too. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the uh, the dictionary does say definition number one to destroy a great number or proportion of and that number definition three which is obsolete is to take a tenth from yeah so anyway the video here we're talking Your about language is obsolete mark yeah Get with it the is. Times. It, venezuela like it. we're talking about venezuela and what's happening over there after having discussed greece venezuela's uh, i would say it's at least the news reports that are coming out seem more dire like you know the the situation with the uh, venezuelan boulevard we'll talk about that here in a moment and how insane uh, the exchange rate is there because there's a government mandated exchange rate, and then there's the actual exchange rate that the market will uh, will provide, that the black market provides, and there's a huge gulf of a disparity between those two. Uh, and we'll we'll explain that here in in a little bit. But we're talking about the government in Venezuela taking over produce. They are going to producers, which few of them remain, of uh, things like milk, pasta, oil, rice, sugar, flour. These are the basics. You know, staples, food staples, and they're taking 30 to 100 percent of their products. Now, they're paying them some arbitrary amount of government decided amount. <laughs> so, we're, yeah, we're going to give you, uh, you know, uh, a fair market value for these in bolivars, of course, which are <laughs> right. becoming less and less value by the by, by, by the moment, by the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, they, you know, they're just taking people's food and then they're going to centralize them into the government food distribution locations, which are former super stores or whatever, you know, d- department stores or, uh, or grocery stores. I just want to point out, too, that the funniest part about this is that the Venezuelan president, when there was the stories were, were hitting the headlines about shortages of toilet paper, what he said is, of course there's a shortage of toilet paper because Venezuelans have so much food, and now oh they my literally God. don't even have food. So the video that we're watching here, most of the shelves are completely empty. Some of them seem to have even been just kind of tipped over. And then as you watch, there's like another like 40 minutes or 40, 40 seconds into the video. There's one aisle that has all of this activity on it. And you've got people that appear to uh, they, they appear to be putting food in large garbage bags or whatever it is that they're picking up. There are a number of people in that one aisle and they're just loading up plastic bags full of whatever's left in this store. It's like a scene from The Walking Dead. Yeah, it really is. Without anybody, you know, eating any brains or anything like that at this point, they're. Uh, I mean, it's just give a it a desperate, couple of weeks. It's a desperate situation <laughs> over there, and the uh, it just keeps getting worse financially. 
So fascinating stuff. I'll post a link to that video on our Facebook and uh, and our Twitter here in a little bit. Also want to let you know how to get Express Coin. Whether you're in Greece or Venezuela or wherever, Bitcoin's a really important thing. Unfortunately, Express Coin only does business in U.S. and Canada. Um, so for, the, for those of you in the U.S. and Canada, you might want to consider getting some Bitcoin. The price is hovering close. It's getting back up towards three hundred dollars per Bitcoin. What was it? Two ninety something earlier today, I think. Yeah, I saw it was like two ninety three. It's two eighty seven at the moment. But um... so you never know where it's going to go tomorrow. But one thing you do know for sure is that Bitcoin is an amazing decentralized currency that was not issued by any central bank. The eurozone cannot control Bitcoin. Uh, the Venezuelan dictator, or you know whatever they call him there, the president Maduro, he can't control Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a way for people in a lot of places to create some level of financial independence for themselves and get away from the state system. So uh, if you're in the U.S. or Canada, go to ExpressCoin.com. You can get Bitcoin there, Litecoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business. You can get cryptocurrency with money order or check there. You can do it from your smartphone. They've got an app at ExpressCoin.com or just use their website, ExpressCoin.com. Don't forget coupon code FTL. That code will get you uh, $40 worth or up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no transfer fee at all. So check it out at expresscoin.com with coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Back to uh, the situation in Venezuela where farmers are being told they better hand it over. They need to hand over 30 to 100% of their crop of these you know, very basic food staples to the government so the government can then distribute that in the way they deem to be appropriate through their government's uh, super stores or whatever. Their five-year plan. Them. They're not very super right now, I can tell you that. They might have been super when they were taken over by the government a couple of years ago, but now empty shelves abound. And they believe, that, you know, the government wants people to believe that them handling food distribution completely from farm to you is going to improve the situation. This no is way. worse than Greece because Greek, um, Greeks can leave Greece if that's what they want to do. They can go anywhere in the Euro um, the European Union mm -hmm. and they can travel there. They can do business there. They can do what they want. The Venezuelans are stuck. They can't, they can't go, go to Guatemala anywhere. or something like that, or I'm sure they can go to some worse for, place. For, yeah, for all of the for all of the complaints that people have about U.S. immigration laws, like some of the immigration laws in South America are absolutely brutal. Like you cannot just travel from one South American country to another. I'm sorry, in, Guatemala is next to Bailey's. I was getting my uh, oh, you were thinking it was right next door. Correct. Okay, uh, Colombia is right what they're right Columbia's next door right to, yeah. as well as Guyana and Brazil. I imagine that if people had the right of free travel to and from these places, that they'd manage to get goods and services in there and 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 alleviate some of this problem. Uh, well, the this goods and services are leaving Venezuela because they can get more money for them in Colombia. So they're actually well, being yes, smuggled out. There was that. a story we had previously where people, guys with huge tanks of gasoline, were huffing it across the border. Walking. Not, not huffing the gasoline, but wa walking <laughs> uh, across the border with this tremendous heavy tank of gasoline on their back just so they can go and sell it for dollars so they can then take those dollars back into Venezuela and right. live like kings. They've probably got, the because of the price controls in Venezuela, they've got the uh, the guard, gasoline is likely set artificially low and yep. then oh, rationed yeah. and then you could go get a actual market price for it somewhere else and that's quite the, uh, and quite do. the thing. Uh, by the way, in according to the story here at the Telegraph in the UK, the government, of course, taking over uh, food production to some extent here. They're not going to actually farm for the food, but they're just going to take it from the farmers, yeah. essentially. Oh, why it, would you, uh, why would you yeah. do something you're not familiar with when you can just deal it from people who are? In March, Venezuelans were so worried about food shortages and diminishing stocks of basic goods. And I wouldn't say it's the Venezuelans who are worried about it. It's the government, guys. Uh, fingerprint scanners have been installed in supermarkets in an attempt to crack down on hoarding. So they are rationing the amounts of food being given out to people. You can't go in there. You're going to scan your fingerprint. They're going to say, we're sorry, Mark, but uh, you've already bought your ration of uh, f uh, rice for this month. So at this point, the Venezuelan uh, bureaucrats, uh, the politicians have given up any semblance of trying to save their economy. Mm. At this point, they're just figuring out how they can pick the last few pieces of meat off of the bones oh, yeah. of the people that they claim to serve. And 
They're going to give all the speeches. They're going to give you all the platitudes, just like politicians do here in this country and just like they do everywhere in the world. But that's what they're doing. They're picking the last little bits of meat off of the bones of the economy of Venezuela. Goodbye. But, you know, the, the good news here, I have to say, and we don't we don't give the Venezuelan government enough credit because they're finally reaching this this goal of income equality that politicians <laughs> have been striving here for in the United Where States. Where everyone's for so poor. Long. Yes. What, what you're pointing to, and I think it's really valid, um, Chris, is that. You, that it, it, there seems to be an insatiable desire on the uh, uh, on the part of the voting public for free crap. It's like in, in Venezuela, as long as the the stinking politicians continue to lie about free crap, they'll they'll still support them. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. It's free talk live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond twenty five percent on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Now a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind, though we are talking about Venezuela right now and just the absolute mess that is uh, is continuing there with now the government having already taken over thousands of grocery stores. Now they're just going to go ahead and start taking people's produce from them. And they're going to pay them for it. Some arbitrary amount of money, and as Cantwell pointed out, will likely be paying them in bolivars, which of course aren't worth... Uh, Nobody wants wants them. Yeah, really much of anything. <laughs> in fact, it's getting even worse now with Financial Times saying that the Venezuelan currency has entered free fall mode. That doesn't sound good. No, Last- when the Financial Times, when the Financial Times says your currency has entered free fall mode... It's bad news. <laughs> right. I mean, we just talked about this a few weeks ago. We it was the last time we discussed Venezuela, and it was at that time that some experts were saying that it was over 600% inflation. If I recall, um, recalling correctly, there was somebody who studied the cost of what it would cost to build a specific sort of Venezuelan sandwich, a very popular sandwich down there. I don't remember what it was called. I apologize about that. But they looked through, okay, you know, this ingredient costs X, this ingredient costs Y, this ingredient costs Z. Here's the cost of the sandwich. They then did the same thing the next week, and the cost had doubled. Mm. Well, the only reason for that is because sandwiches are a sexist conspiracy by the patriarchy. Well, no, we, we can get to that. There is the claim that air conditioning is apparently a sexist conspiracy. No, but it's all the whole, you know, you know, make me a sandwich thing is just patriarchal and sexist. And so that's the only reason for that. It has nothing to do with the inflation, <laughs> Ian. You have to understand that everything is about sex and race. Well, no one's making that claim with Venezuela, but we will get into uh, somebody who is actually claiming that air conditioning is some sort of sex conspiracy between uh, the patriarchy and women. That may be in hour number three. But right now, I uh, want to talk about the Venezuela currency freefall, according to FT.com, having tumbled beyond the 500 per dollar mark, that is 500 bolivars per dollar, in the black market at the start of the month. This was published seven hours ago. Uh, then went through the 600 mark just eight days later. Wow. The Bolivar is now within sight of crashing through the 700 barrier. The mm. so-called Bolivar Fuerte, or Strong Bolivar. <laughs> the, the Strong Bolivar. Yeah, remember, the old Bolivar became so worthless, they replaced it with the Strong Bolivar like 10 or 15 years ago. <laughs> so the, the Bolivar is so strong, we'll cram it down your throat <laughs> and take your food. It's so strong, you can get 600 of them now for one measly dollar. It's, uh, uh, let me ask you this, Ian. Why hasn't uh, Bitcoin caught on in Venezuela? Um, I don't know. I mean, I haven't looked for any... Uh, we did look at a piece, actually, about Bitcoin in Venezuela, and there are people using it. I mean, when you say caught on, has it caught on in Greece? I mean, well, there are in, in, there in are Greece, you don't have hyperinflation, there. right? So, I mean, there's a different story. See, Bitcoin is going to continue. You know what they're saying about the force of the dollar? Dollars are doing very well in Venezuela right now. Yeah, not because they're a uh, fiat currency or depreci- or a value-backed currency, but because they're holding their value in comparison to the boulevard. The Bitcoin right. is not only holding its value against the dollar, it is increasing in, in value against the dollar. So anybody who buys a Bitcoin in um, Venezuela should be able to use that Bitcoin with other people at, at increasingly um, more to their advantage as time goes by. But for some reason, people aren't switching over. Uh, businesses aren't taking them. Is it because there isn't enough cell phone coverage? Is it there not enough smartphone penetration? I don't know. I, I, I would suspect that... a. a, a if you're at a position where people are having trouble finding food, then they probably don't have a lot of spare money with which to change into other currencies, right? Now, it might be a Could wise be. thing to do, but I mean, look, if you're if if you're living paycheck to paycheck in the United States, you're probably not hoarding Bitcoin, right? And if you are wondering if you'll be able to eat today in Venezuela, then, I don't know, getting into... Currency exchanges seems like a bit of a stretch as but well. But they are into currency exchanges. They're doing d- ex- currency exchanges for dollars all yeah. the time. I'm just and and with bitcoins, if you could get you know other businesses around converted to this, and it would seem like they'd have huge incentives to do that. They'd be able to do business. They don't have to currency exchange. They can just stay in bitcoins at that point. 
Well, it, but you you couldn't uh, just stay in bitcoins because you've got to buy food and not all and and especially if the state run grocery stores are certainly not going to accept your bitcoin. They certainly don't want to do that. And of yeah. course, there's a lot of risk in bitcoin. We all can right. say that we expect bitcoin to go up, but bitcoin could go to zero tomorrow and these people are in dire straits. So, so could the boulevard. Well, well, they, yeah, it's well definitely they, more likely to go to zero tomorrow. Well, exactly, but, but when they go into dollars, right? They have some standard of expectation that the dollar is going to maintain its value where they don't have the same expectation. For I but get it with dollars. The way, there's also restrictions on dollars in Venezuela. So you can't just go to the bank and say, uh, yeah, I'd like to get this uh, turned into dollars. You can't do that there. No, of course uh, not. You're talking about this situation. This is the black market exchange rate where you correct. literally have to go to like a drug dealer to buy U.S. dollars. Somebody, there's probably a lot of different people selling dollars. I yeah. imagine they're in high demand. Somebody there. who's the equivalent of a drug dealer. But it, right. It's illegal. Right. You're going, you're getting dollars. You're, you know, that's not legal to do in venezuela so i'm speculating i don't know what the legality of bitcoin is but they it wouldn't surprise me if the government said if you're doing business in venezuela you're doing it in boulevards you cannot accept any i'm speculating right? i'm sure you cannot accept anything but the official boulevard the uh, boulevard fuerte you can't well, do that and certainly the state-owned stores are going to do that yeah. right so i mean it, well um, they're going to send guys around to check on the other stores yeah you know, they get yeah. reports that somebody's accepting something else I imagine that could uh, result in some kind of punishment. That's just speculation. If you know more, yeah. please call in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Because I remember we did read a, something about Bitcoin in Venezuela a, a few months ago, maybe several months ago. Uh, it just you know, didn't seem like it was taking off necessarily, but at the same time, it didn't say it was prohibited. So I don't know what the current status is. If you know more, please inform us. But right now, the, a dollar that, the, the amount of dollars you can buy, or excuse me, the amount of boulevards you can buy with one dollar, has hit a new low, if you want to call it, uh, well, that's how they're referring to it in the Financial Times, 683, 683 uh, Bolivar Fuertes per dollar. That was the black market price today, according to dollartoday.com, the rate tracking website that has become the unofficial reference for checking the Venezuelan currency. Because the official exchange rate, which has not changed in quite a long time, is still 6.3 Bolivars per US dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so it's literally 100, 100 times, times <laughs> more than 100 times a difference. 6.3 to 680. Mm. That's the difference. So even if you could legally go into a bank in Venezuela and withdraw dollars, exchange bolivars for a dollar, if you could do that, you'd be getting an awesome deal, right? You'd be get you'd giving them six point three. They'd be giving you a dollar, and then you could go and get six hundred of the boulevards for the dollar on the black market. So that's why <laughs> they're not allowing anybody to exchange, uh, yeah. you know, boulevards into dollars. Yeah, I'm surprised that there's not some kind of. Uh you know, some kind of black market business going on, uh, you know, here in the United States of people just moving dollars over to Venezuela. Oh, there but, is. There was a story we talked about um, probably more than a year ago. Somebody's talking, getting rich then. Yes, yes. Talking about essentially people who are basically smuggling uh, dollars down in there. And they're, the people who do have dollars in Venezuela are, of course, living like kings while everybody else is scraping by. So, yeah, there are people who are doing that kind of stuff. And there was like some way that some dude was actually flying and somehow getting airline miles. And I forget exactly what. There's all kinds of well, I, ways I, for people who have the resources to work this system. But you have to be Venezuelan, basically, right? I'm not sure. I remember I remember when Silk Road was up, but I imagine some of the other black market, uh, um, you know, uh, Bitcoin drug dealing sites probably still have this. That they used one of the things that you could buy with Bitcoin on Silk Road was paper currency from other countries and i imagine mm -hmm. that there's some amount of that going on on some of these uh, black market exchanges the currency has lost 43 percent of its value over the past month as a fresh drive in global oil prices squeezes government finances and drains foreign reserves uh the meanwhile price increases are seen by economists to be approaching hyperinflation territory it's as pretty the, close the government cranks up the printing press to pay for its expenses i love how you can get away with your official exchange rate being a hundred times off from the actual <laughs> exchange rate and they say they might be nearing hyperinflation <laughs> yeah. at some time in the future <laughs> Well, right. There was somebody else who said it was already a 600 percent uh, inflation rate there right now, based on certain estimates, because the Venezuelan central bank stopped pr uh, printing the numbers at the beginning of this year. 
So they used to give some official state inflation rate, which, of course, was a bunch of BS anyway. <laughs> but, you know, now they've stopped giving those numbers out. Hmm. Something's really fishy going it's on It's kind of like when the United States stopped reporting M3. Yeah. Yeah. Venezuela's money supply has expanded 85% over the past year, according to Mr. Dahlin, citing Venezuelan central bank data. Again, that's from their own central bank that the money expa- uh, the money supply has expanded 85% in a year. That's what they're telling you. Hmm. So <laughs> what's actually going on? Toll-free number tonight, 855. The politicians are lying. Yeah, 855-450-FREE. The politicians are eating well in Venezuela. You can better believe that. It's just everybody else that's getting screwed. They're doing just fine. Yeah. Toll-free number here, uh, 855-450-FREE. Coming up, is it a conspiracy to have air conditioning that's, what, too cold in the office? We'll talk about it coming up here in moments. Free Talk Live. Hour 3 is on the way. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. This is Shaquille O'Neal. And the Shaquettes. Reminding you that anytime, anytime is a good time. Good time. For the cooling, drying, fresh scent of Gold Bond powder spray. Like after the gym. Or a crowded elevator ride. Or golf. Or working with farm animals. Or a hard day's work. Like sports casting. You said it, ladies. Stay cool with Gold Bond powder spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. <laughs> So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,090 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $290. Antiwar.com reports, since the late 2001 U.S. invasion and occupation of the country and the subsequent creation of the current Afghan government, the Taliban moved from the role of a mostly recognized government to insurgency. With fledgling peace talks in Pakistan and China, the Taliban may be preparing to undergo another transition. 13 plus years into the war, the Taliban holds considerable territory across Afghanistan and continues to command support across several regions. Analysts thus believe that any deal resulting from these talks is going to have to include some significant power sharing with the Taliban if it is going to end the fighting. Afghanistan's been in more or less non-stop war for decades now since the Soviet invasion, and at the end of every round there must come a reckoning in which enemies come to some sort of uneasy settlement of the ongoing conflict. The difficulty of this is reflected in how many times Afghanistan has gone through peace deals only to return to fighting soon thereafter. The U.S. imposed system in Afghanistan, though, seems like it's going to have to get used to the idea of the Taliban playing the role of a political party with significant regional influence and right in the midst of the political mainstream. Afghanistan's existing government is already heavily divided, and the Taliban's unity could allow it to consolidate more power in future elections if it participates. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports in a rare weekend session, the U.S. Senate made a couple of moves on Sunday to keep President Barack Obama's signature health care law on the books and resurrect a federal credit agency after it remained dormant for 30 days. The Export-Import Bank of the United States operated through June 30th, but shut down after that. Sunday's move in favor of reopening the agency is expected to send the proposal to a far more divided House of Representatives this week. The Senate voted 67 to 26 on the measure, which was attached to a three-year highway and infrastructure bill expected to pass this week. The Senate, though, still needs to finalize a final version of the proposal reauthorizing the bank's reopening. If the bank does reopen, analysts believe it will be a major blow to conservative Republicans who believe the agency is an unnecessary element of the federal government's fiscal apparatus. Jay Timmons, president of the National Association of Manufacturers, said, with more than 60 export credit agencies in enabling our foreign competitors to seize opportunities away from workers, it's critical that Congress restores this important tool for American exports. It wasn't clear Sunday whether the House would take up the issue, as it may not even bring the proposal to the floor for a vote. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports firefighters made progress Sunday against three wildfires burning in Montana and California, aided by cooler temperatures overnight. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection set ablaze in the Sierra foothills near Lake Tahoe in California was burning rapidly toward the north despite calming overnight, and evacuation orders remained in place for several communities. Southwest of Sacramento, near California's storied wine country, the 6,900-acre rag fire was 60% contained, and evacuation orders had been lifted. In Montana, a wildfire at Glacier National Park along the west side of St. Mary Lake was 20% contained on Sunday morning. The so-called Reynolds Fire covered about 3,100 acres at mid-morning Sunday, prompting the closure of an 18-mile section of Going to the Sun Road in the park near the St. Mary Visitor Center. However, officials said that a majority of the park was unaffected by the fire and remained open to the public. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This year's Coachella Music Festival is happening right now. And that means one thing, the largest gathering of contact jugglers in the world. All the biggest names from the sea juggling scene are performing all over the festival, including Mr. Tomorrow, Isis, White Angel, Chad Bronstein, and of course, the legendary Conundrum. Our own Lena Perez is live at Coachella. This music festival is a who's who of orb masters and jugglemen. What have the highlights been so far? Well, Yasu Kaitu did his first stateside performance in three years over by the smoothie tent, which was amazing. And there was festival favorite Hans Hansman freestyling in his usual spot near the portable toilets. But I'm really excited for Becca Flannery Miller. She's four foot five, wears transition lenses, and is a master of the multi ball. I love her. And I heard there was a surprise late night set from the Winterhorn Brothers. Yeah, right outside the DJ tent. It was an unbelievable flurry of spearsmanship. I wish I was there. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us toll-free, 855-453-FREE. That is the toll-free number, and that's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio, it's Ian. Cantwell. 
and King Mark the First. So you don't have to talk about Greece and Venezuela, which is basically the first couple hours of the show. We're going to move into a different topic. You can talk about those things if you'd like. You can bring up anything you want here on Free Talk Live. We also have Skype. I don't know if I mentioned that enough tonight. Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to give us a ring up there and you'll sound a lot better. Chris Cantwell, Mark, you guys both brought uh, the same show prep item to the table since Chris is our guest host here tonight. Uh, will you share with us a story from Jezebel? Now, this is sort of like a uh, feminist website, right, Jezebel? Is yeah, right? no sort of about it. These are radical lunatics. Okay. Um, Hold on. Are, are, is Jezebel as radical as they come? I mean, I've seen feminists that are, seem to be more, that that, that are too be- far beyond the pale that Jezebel won't even go. Well, I mean, there's Femin. I don't know if you are familiar with that Oh, we're very familiar with yeah. them. I love <laughs> I their mean, activism. Ian's a, fa- he's, Ian's a fan. I mean, regardless of their opinions, uh, you got to give them credit for doing some pretty ballsy activism. I mean, I could give them some credit for being complete lunatics willing to make (laughs) idiots of themselves in the street. There is value in that. But they're maniacs, right? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, some of the stuff that you see them doing and then stories like the one that we're looking at here just really go to show just how crazy this is if you take these ideas to their ultimate logical conclusions, right? All I'm saying is if uh, libertarians started doing more topless activism, liber- you know, libertarian females, they'd probably get more attention for, you know, libertarians would probably get more attention in the mean, in the media. Oh, they'd certainly get more attention. Femin, Femin is on to something there, right? Like they've, they've got the... Uh, yes, the guy who runs Femin is on to something there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not is kidding it a guy? <laughs> it's a guy that runs Femin or, you know, this, the, their advisor. Are you sure or that's not an Onion story you're confusing? I could go ahead and look it up for you, buddy. Well, it sounds vaguely familiar. In but one no- way or another, you know, the, these people are crazy. And this is, look... I, I um, you've got to be crazy I, to be an I, activist. I will give a little sneak preview of uh, the the upcoming convention I'm going to be key, oh. uh, keynoting at, and I'm talking about. I want to talk about radicalism hmm. at this thing. Okay, so you know, you get, there's a lot of different definitions of radicalism that sort of run around, and and my thing is like taking things to their ultimate logical conclusion. All right. Okay. So if you say that you know feminism is about equality, gender equality in every way, well, let's start trying to boil that down to its ultimate logical conclusion, and you end up down some pretty dark rabbit holes when you start doing that, right? All right. So this story in Jezebel says, "Is office air conditioning a sexist conspiracy?" <laughs> and it starts off so- yeah, that and leaving the toilet seat up at work. <laughs> it's just. Science has already uh, told us that women feel more sensitive to cold temperatures, which is why going to a movie theater can feel like stepping into a freezer. Working in an office all day can also be torturous if you forget to bring along a sweater. Over at the Washington Post, writer Petula Dvorak theorizes that intensely cold office temperatures are yet another example of the patriarchy dominating (laughs) an environment. Dvorak. And this is a real website. Like This is not a joke. This is not AntonioBueller.org. <laughs> this end. is one of the most highly trafficked feminist websites on the planet Earth. Wow. Um, Dvorak uh, researching this by taking t- uh, to both women and men who are outside of their, on their breaks away from their cubicles. Many of the women were thawing out trying to soak up the warm weather when men... When the men were asked if the temperatures inside their offices were too cold, they had no issues. How nice for them. Dvorak <laughs> observes that this women- This has been true for me. Like, I've, you know, been at offices and I, you know, some female worker will come over and try to sort of enroll me in the conversation that the temperature in the office is too, too cold. cold, right? And uh, you know what? I got things to do. I'm not interested in this conversation. Frankly, I won't sweat if the temperature is raised. I just don't have time for your conversation. Uh-huh. I can handle- Are they hoping you're going to do something about it? That I don't know. Um, uh, you're not in charge. You're just a salesman. You're not in charge of the AC. Yeah, but I think that if you can just get a, a certain amount of bodies on your side uh-huh. in this argument, you can have the, the, the temperature moved. It's just that I've always found that I can handle temperatures of a wider variation than, you know- other people around me who complain about the temperature. Well, I, I would I would say that it, 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 is, it does not seem, even without looking at whatever study they're linking here, it does not come as a surprise to me that women get cold easier than men. Okay? How many times have a- any of us gave, given a woman our jacket? Sure. Right? Yeah, I, do this, I do this all the time. It's just like, oh, I'm cold, and I'm just like, here, take this off and just hand it to a woman. Even if I have no expectation of sleeping with her, I'm just like, here's a jacket. Yep. There, and usually, the body heat... Uh, the bo- uh, body heat is, you know, based on mass, right? right they're and thinner usually a lot of times. They're, they're right? two thirds the size. I mean, I'm pretty skinny, and I get cold easily, right? 
So, um, let's see. Uh, Dvorak observes that the women are dressed appropriately for summer weather, but once they step inside, have to resort to cardigans and pashaminas to keep from freezing. I don't think that they're literally freezing to death, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, okay? If you're getting a little chilly on the office place, it's a little bit different than my life is in danger now, from frostbite in the tundra. Wouldn't they? I'm Okay, this is a ridiculous story, obviously. <laughs> Um, because I can understand, right? Like I get cold in this studio if it's uh, you know below seventy degrees in here, uh, and so I get that. I don't think it's a conspiracy against me, and I've been in you know several You're workplaces. You're the one that controls the uh, well here, but, yeah. but in other workplaces, I didn't think, oh my god, it's a conspiracy against skinny guys. Of course, it's like not that. a conspiracy against you. You're a white male. All the conspiracies are against everybody else in the world. And now wait, now if they're complaining about having to put on more clothes. Because it's cold in the office, wouldn't the feminists in this case also be complaining if it was too hot? Because then they would be forced to take clothes off and possibly reveal cleavage and things like that. I mean, wouldn't putting more clothes on be a better thing as far as them not getting sexually harassed? No, because they want to run around in their in their underwear screaming, "Still not asking for it." <laughs> So I'm, fine no. with, I'm fine with that. Um, the, <laughs> if you, if you, if you, the, this is saying, okay, well, I have to put on a, I have to put on a sweater, which means that I, it's like you're making me put on a burka because you're just mm. a male oppressive patriarchal society. So my mother, um, uh, this is sort of an ongoing joke in our in our family. She has sweaters that she'll ferret away when she worked. Um, she would ferret away sweaters at different places just so that she'd have one in case she forgot to bring a sweater with her. It was always important to her to have a sweater. She just she's one of those people that's cold most of the time. It's like me with weapons. Yeah, <laughs> my wife. Uh, turns out I married a woman similar to my mother in this area. She has. <laughs> She has her indoor jacket and her driving jacket and her work jacket, you know, like the whole thing. Um, she's always got a jacket someplace. She'll even layer the jackets so that she can have the one, you know, she wears the outdoor jacket over the indoor jacket and this kind of thing. I'm, you know, she's never suggested in any way, shape or form this is the patriarchy. Mm. And I wouldn't think that it was the patriarchy. I think that this is different groups of people not having, um, you know, just not being able to get along as far as the temperature goes. And there's this old, let's call it a study. I don't believe anything that comes prior to the internet, and I don't believe much after the internet. But do you remember hearing that the workplace is most productive at 72 degrees? No, I don't recall that, no. Nobody? I, guess I, I don't remember one. that exactly. I mean, uh, I would say, I would say that uh, you know they don't want to totally burn out their uh, you know electrical bill by running the air conditioner too high. But uh, you know, I have there. They talk about I think something to that nice. effect. I think that's a nice temperature. That's I the temperature that right uh, now, I have heard all the time um, that workplaces are most productive at this temperature. This article will say differently. Yeah. So uh, yeah. the author continues here. Back in my old teen days of working at a retail store. Hot topic. I'd constantly complain about the AC blasting. My manager, a man, would say that <laughs> cold temperatures kept workers awake and more alert. He was wrong. Dvorak points out a study that revealed cold workers make more errors and are less productive. Now, but A quick, study, okay. Yeah. Well, cold, er, cold workers make more errors and are less productive. Women are more sus susceptible to cold temperatures and thus gender pay gap. Right. Uh, that's not gender pay gap is not discussed in this it's article. Jump, but that, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you're making mistakes because you're because you forgot to put a sweater on. And now you're going to tell me that you're an equally productive uh, employee. Uh, so she quotes the study, says researchers had their hands on the controls at an insurance office for a month. And when they warmed the place from 68 to 77 degrees, typos went down by 44 percent and 68. productivity went up by 150 percent. Now, I find that curious. I have a little bit of a trouble believing that this slight degree in uh, temperature change, a nine degree t uh, change in temperature, nine degrees is went a up. large change. Well, I'm still saying by a hundred and fifty percent. We'll come back with more here in moments. I can tell you, if I was cold, no, it would it be a distraction. Up uh, it went up. Uh, didn't it go up fifty percent? All right, we'll come one hundred and fifty percent. That's back. what we'll I'm looking back. at. Eight fifty-five, four fifty, free. You believe this one? It's free talk live. That's what it says. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. 
I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, two of our top priorities are providing quality food at a reasonable price and protecting your security. When you call 800-700-2184, we will never record your phone call and never ask for your personal information, like how much food you have stored or where you keep it. We'll also never store your credit card information and email address on a computer. Your email address will never be shared or sold. We'll never limit the number of boxes you can purchase. We'll never use outside packers or use relabeled food from another company. Our meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and everything is packed with oxygen absorbers and mylar pouches under our direct supervision at our plant in Oregon. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from their producers in Oregon and then passing the savings on to you. Call 800-700-2184 and purchase our 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 and $10 ships your entire order to the lower 48. Visit our website 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 800-700-2184. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com at 800-700-2184. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to play online poker with Bitcoin, you need a site that's trustworthy and technically sound. The site managers of SWCPoker.eu have proven their commitment to bringing you great gameplay from a site you can trust, SWCPoker.eu. They have lots of new games too, including Chinese poker, and their Krill leaderboard is open right now. It's a beautiful site, easy to use with lots of players. Go on over to SWCPoker.eu now and have some fun with your Bitcoin, SWCPoker.eu. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. We're back. More Free Talk Live happening right now. We've got time for you. If you want to join us here at 855-450-FREE uh, to discuss the Jezebel story, which is, believe it or not, a real thing where somebody is claiming that uh, there's a conspiracy, a conspiracy to keep the air conditioning too cold in the office for the benefit of all males, apparently, uh, versus the females, which, of course, is a ridiculous claim, right? There are women who have more meat on their bones than other women. I imagine they are more comfortable in a colder office than, say, I am, and I have, like, nothing on my bones. I'm very, very skinny person. Whereas, I'm sorry, guys, I'm bad with the mics here tonight. Chris Cantwell, Mark Edge in the studio here with me, Ian. Yeah, and so I actually just I just clicked through to the source material on this because the article in Jezebel was talking about a, an article in the Washington Post. And one of the things that the Washington Post links to is actually a study that says um, 
uh, are are postmenopausal women causing your office to be too cold? So then, uh, women who are then in uh, in or after menopause uh, are less susceptible to these colder temperatures apparently, and and want the AC turned up. And then younger women. So is this older women now oppressing younger uh-huh. women as well? That sounds more plausible, but I still don't believe it. Well, it still it goes with my theory of the matriarchy. Um, I know that uh, other people have posited this theory in the past, but I'm really of the opinion that what if there ever existed a patriarchy, it has been replaced by uh, you know the gals that are in charge. And certainly the older ones would be the ones that are sort of in charge, right? Like older people have always sort of been in charge of younger people. That mm-hmm. doesn't make it right. It just makes it the way things are. Uh, and I've often also said that if the feminists want to see some kind of change, they got to stop talking to the men because the men have no control. They're not going to be changing anything. <laughs> Most offices I've seen, full of women. The well, ones yeah. I've worked in, women are everywhere. Not, Further- not in the offices I've worked in. I've I've worked in male-dominated industries most of my life. And, I guess I've worked know. since I'm in marketing. I've worked in female-dominated. Yeah, industries. but how hard would it be for a relatively attractive uh, woman in the office to go into the general manager's office, bat her eyes at him, and then get him to turn the air conditioning a little bit warmer? I mean, come on, it's not that hard. Yeah, I imagine in a lot of environments that wouldn't be too difficult. I mean, I I used to work in the data center industry, right? And so we had like uh, we had to keep the place cold in order to prevent a meltdown That's of the servers. And yeah, so that is important. You know, it would be cold, but of course, this is you know um, high level IT work and and is male dominated and generally. And you would anyway. dress for work if it's cold at the workplace. You get into the habit of bringing whatever you need. I to worked stay at a warm. warehouse that had a big refrigerator in it. I guess that's a whole bunch of patriarchy going on, right? Yeah. I mean, look at all the patriarchy keeping the tomatoes cool. Yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> it's nuts. So the, the the real tell in this article isn't the um, you know female uh, menopausal females versus the young females. It's the claim that um, a study was done. So like you know in the past I have heard 72 degrees is the most productive temperature you can keep in office. They quote in this article that tell, what are the numbers 68 to 78 when the when the temperature was changed from 68 to 77 degrees typos went down by 44% and productivity went up by 150% but I want to point out that neither Jezebel nor the Washington Post links to that study. Mm. And most of these people will take data out of context in order to reach their desired conclusion with just about everything. Because I mean how like how off your rocker do you have to be just to say this is a conspiracy by the patriarchy to oppress women? It's crazy. It's just it's just you start from that you when you start That's from like that moon premise, crazy. you're a lunatic, right? Like I I should not have to read this article to give it a refutation. It doesn't even deserve <laughs> that level of attention. I'm only even bringing it up on this radio to point out how ridiculous these people are, and 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 how it's not even worthy of being taken seriously at this point because that's what it comes down to. That's your that's radical feminism. When you take it's absurd. The, when you take the premise that all conditions between the genders should be equal, what you come down to is the air conditioning is oppressing me, and that's ridiculous. Well, first world problems, I guess. Well, I guess I mean you know like the 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 assumption I need to make here it's nice to have air conditioning in order to believe in this patriarchy um, nonsense that they're talking about is that businesses across America and around the world are choosing to cut out a, an increase of 150 percent productivity that they could have simply by saving money mm-hmm. and increasing and decreasing the air conditioning in their building but they're doing it in order to oppress the women it's right. absurd. My, all, that is all absurd of these, all of these captains of industry are just they're just paying 33 percent more for all their labor to discriminate against women and paying more for their electric bills to keep errors high i mean it's just it, every time you try to put this stuff under the slightest bit of rational analysis it completely falls apart but that never stops them because these mm. people are completely detached from reality it's not it's not oppression that they're at war with it is reality itself they mm. hate the idea that there could be a physical universe with actual rules in it <laughs> i mean they say reality is oppressing me that's what it boils down well, to things are go- not going my way and i'm going to use my pet issue to uh you know, to go after it but uh, i mean this is uh, this is really really bizarre stuff this the only the thing i can come up with here's theory. my conspiracy theory my conspiracy theory is Jezebel puts up these stupid articles in order to get talk show hosts to go bananas. This is this is a That's stupid ridiculous. claim. There isn't anyone who is in it within their rational mind who is going to believe that turning up the office temperature from 
a few degrees is going to get your increase of 150 percent. Um, now, I, I've never seen an office that was kept at 68, unless you're talking about, um, you know, here in the studio we attempted to keep the temperatures down very low um, at one point one winter just to see how we could do it. But that's the only time I've ever experienced it. 68, that's ridiculous. So need typing gloves. Share your thoughts here with us here at 855 450 free. This is the equivalent of InfoWars for the feminist movement, it seems like. I mean, there, it's really what it is. There's some sort of conspiracy behind every business decision, and it's just absolutely ridiculous. And if you want to, you know, if you want to prove this is not the case, then just try to negotiate with the management of your office to turn the you know, the temperature up a couple degrees. Like I said before, uh, you know, the average pretty lady working in the office can probably finagle this just by oh, asking now, real nice like. No, 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 no. Now, now you're, yeah, you're discriminating against uh, body shape, and now you're oppressing fat women <laughs> but just by saying that on the radio, Ian. And that's what it is. If they fail in one, they will just bring up another, yeah. and they will jump from oppression conspiracy to oppression conspiracy until you just give up and say, just, I'll just give oppressed? you what you want. What is it? What do I have to give you to shut up? I, I, Ian, I don't know what you're talking about. I have not worked in an office where um, what you're talking about occurs. Um, what you know, where the the uh, the boss is like, oh yeah, pretty lady, I'm going to do what you want. Most of the bosses I've worked with uh -huh. and, and and talked to are petrified of their female employees because they know that the cudgel of sexual harassment can be yeah. whipped out at any point. So if something's you're going to they occur, do it for any any woman in the office, I'm saying that if a woman goes in the office and says the temperature being too low is the patriarchy, that that no, that temperature is going to go up, and that's yeah. what the establishment of this is. This is um, this is that one of these silly articles with the intention of being used in the future for reference. I could just I, no I can't wait I can't reference. wait until the discrimination suits come in. I mean, did you follow this thing with Ellen Powell, the the oh, interim the CEO of Reddit? Reddit, she resigned, right? Yeah, well, she she resigned thankfully, but I mean, how stupid was Reddit to bring her in in the in the first place? Because she had this completely frivolous lawsuit going on against her previous employer, right? And then Reddit hmm. brings her in, and then she starts to destroy Reddit. She's just like, I'm going to ban salary negotiations because men are better at negotiating than women, which is creating sexism in the workplace. And then I'm going to start banning sub. And then people freaked out. We're like, get out of here, you lunatic. Get away from us. We don't want you doing this to our website anymore. Didn't the replacement, wasn't the replacement not that much better? I don't know too much about the re the yeah. person who replaced her. I don't imagine it's better. I yeah. mean, look at what's happening to the internet. They're going to turn it into Facebook where you can't say anything that offends anybody ever. All right. There's more coming up here. Trigger if you want warning. To comment. Are you a lady and do you agree with this? Is this a, a patriarchy of people trying to oppress you in the office place? 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number or join us on Skype at username lrn.fm. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's R, like rebel, R, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. .com. Hi. I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. 
This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. On Monday, gold opened $3 lower at $1,097 per ounce, and silver was down $0.02 cents at $14.72 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $288. US dollars. Roberts & Roberts Brokerage, when you're serious about precious metals, whether you're buying or selling, give us a call at 800-874-9760. Or for more information, visit us online at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. More Free Talk Live happening now. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Is there anything to this claim, this ridiculous-sounding claim that uh, Chris Cantwell has been reading from Jezebel, which is a blog site, uh, that it's a patriarchy, evidence of the patriarchy that businesses frequently are too cold for some of the women who work there, which, of course, is just seems just on its face to be absolutely ludicrous, uh, but maybe somebody believes this. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And whoever you are, whatever gender, uh, you probably should consider diversifying the money that you have in savings. and Maybe getting some uh, gold or silver. And that's a good way to, and historically at least, prices have been going down recently. But over his, historical times, gold and silver has done a good job of keeping up with inflation. At the very least, protecting your value that you've created in your life uh, from being taken by the government's printing press. Because when the government prints out more uh, U.S. dollars or whatever your local currency might be, that devalues the, the dollars that you have in savings unless you have those dollars in something else, like gold or silver. So you can go to gold.freetalklive.com. I heard today that gold was down close to $1,000, I and mean, it was just at 1300 recently, so it might be, might be a good time to buy. Of course, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, but gold and silver not only can be a good hedge against inflation, it can also be an investment in a barter currency. Whatever your reasons for wanting gold and silver, you can go to gold.freetalklive.com, and the folks at Midas Resources will get you hooked up with some great rates on hand-picked gold and silver pieces so go to gold.freetalklive.com or call them toll-free, 877-857-9938. That's toll-free, 877-857-9938. As we continue here, just an absolutely absurd piece over a Jezebel. It's hard to believe they can even take themselves seriously with ridiculous conspiracy theory like this, suggesting that it's the evidence of the patriarchy that offices sometimes are too cold for some of the women that work there. Not all of them, because again, it likely depends on how much body fat you have on you. You know, if you're a little overweight, you're probably a little more comfortable in the office than a skinny lady would well, be. Well, muscle mass as well. I mean, muscle yeah. mass will, you know, be moving and generating heat and all of that, all manner of things. Um, and it's just, it's like I said, I mean, it's one of these things that oppression is now 
I don't like it. Like, literally, mm. I have a preference against this, yeah. thus oppression, okay? And I, I, the, the, the top story on my website right now is all social justice warriors are suicidal. Because, I mean, this is really what it is. And it's just that they are not, they are not happy to kill themselves, right? They, they, they are fundamentally at odds with the universe in which they live. They hate their lives. They're miserable with everything. And so they are just looking to nitpick at every single thing in the world. And they're like, well, I don't like this very much. That means that I'm being oppressed. And because equality, now the government has to step in and change everything. They must not have enough work to do or things to keep them busy if they're cooking up just ridiculous, kooky conspiracy theories like this. I was actually curious to know what the uh, the nature of the the word Jezebel was. Where did that come from? It's uh, King Ahab's wife in the Bible. Yeah, that's what Wikipedia says here. Uh, according to Wikipedia and according to biblical accounts, Jezebel incited her husband King Ahab to abandon the worship of Yahweh and encourage <laughs> worship of the deities Baal and Asherah instead. Jezebel persecuted the prophets of Yahweh and fabricated false evidence of blasphemy against an innocent landowner who refused to sell his property to King Ahab, which then led to that landowner being put to death. So they've named their website after a woman who was known for lying uh, to the point where a man was put to death because of it. That doesn't seem like uh, a good role model to me. It seems like one of the more honest titles I've seen out of a feminist outfit, right? I mean, what happened? Every time I complain about feminism, what do people say? Oh, what the, feminism is all about equality. It's about equality. We're just we're just looking to be treated equally under the law. Well, that, uh, okay, so that that's fine. Uh, I, I, for one, I'd like to see where women are not treated equally under the law. Please show me, because all I can see in this uh, in the United States, at least, is that men are not treated equally under the law. Well, but that's fine. We both are being treated unequally, but one of us is getting screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the really the question that I, that I have in this is that I, I mean we're talking about women I, I I don't know I don't live in this world where women are not being treated uh, equally I guess that's uh, and feminism you, is a terrible term you obviously live in a world where women are, are not being treated equally the the point is that they're treat, being treated better than men which is not at all there's surprising a lot of evidence me. for that I mean and and look I treat women better than I treat men right mm -hmm. like right. I do like I you know I go, go walk into a store and I open the door and there's a man you know three feet behind me I'm just walking through the door right if I'm walking through a door and there's a woman three feet behind me then i'm gonna hold the door open and welcome to welcome to this place where i don't work my lady yep, right you, sure. know, just, you know if uh, i i hear a woman say i'm cold and i'm like here's my jacket you know we do stuff like this and i don't think that it's entirely inappropriate to do but at the same time i'm getting to a point where it's just like uh, all of this all of this horse dung thank you <laughs> that i that i have to to be inundated with on a daily basis especially as a libertarian because we are inundated with social justice warriors and it's happening you know i think here in new hampshire probably worse than in other places because we are a ground zero for you know the, the largest libertarian political migration on planet earth and there's this huge leftist social justice warrior infiltration of libertarian circles and it just gets worse by the day I don't experience it at all. I've never uh, had a conversation with uh, anybody in New Hampshire that would have been suggested to me that that's uh, the case. I had Stephanie Murphy and Brian Sovereign, both of which uh, identify as uh, as feminists, on the show for some time. I've had co tried to get conversations out of them where they're showing me where this uh, systemic the oppression uh, oppression of women is, and the best thing I was able to get was. Um, you know, like abortion laws, um, you know, that and that sort of society uh, calls a man who's successful sexually a stud and um, that a woman uh, who's uh, sexually successful a slut. No, right? because a woman who goes around sleeping with a bunch of different guys is not sexually successful. She is a slut. And slut shaming exists for a very good reason. Tell me about it. Why? Be well, because there's a lot of negative consequences for a woman who goes around and sleeps around with a lot of guys. And it has more to do with like? just society's perception of her, right? But aren't there also consequences for guys that go and sleep around? Yeah, there certainly are. But at the same time, they are less, right? Why? Like, well, because for one, I'm not getting my uh, my 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 uh, member is not becoming smaller each time I put it in a woman, whereas uh, a woman is getting herself stretched out. Her that's... sexual value is decreasing. I don't believe I don't that for a true. second. Okay, um, uh, uh, I, I am I, not. I have a woman uh, personally that has uh, had a child of her own. She bore him, and there's no there's no noticeable difference um, in in that area. There's no noticeable difference after a baby comes out. That is correct. 
A hundred percent, man. Yeah, man. I don't know about. I don't know where you're coming from on this one, uh, Chris. Look that one up. Okay, I don't know so if there's any if evidence that's the one for that claim. That there's no that's negative a pretty consequences lame claim. for female sexual promiscuity. Then just fine. Okay. Go ahead. Women are more that. likely to get um, social diseases than men are, but anybody can use a condom. Um, women are obviously they have to bear the the difficulty of uh, uh, children more so than men do. But we have birth control, so that many of the sort of modern conveniences have uh, taken care of the problems of having too many sexual partners there are a lot of gals out there that have sex with a lot of guys that have really not that much of, not, not that much of a problem uh, as a result do you know do you know a lot of sexually promiscuous uh, promiscuous women who are like mentally fit and sane and not a problem um, you wouldn't necessarily know who's promiscuous, right? Like because if they keep it behind the scenes, that because they're concerned about being outed or looked down upon because of that, you wouldn't necessarily know who they are. I don't think. Uh, just because there are, um, just be, if that statement were true, and I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I will neither agree nor deny with that. This, this was not a, a statement. This is a question. Do you nope. know a lot of sexually promiscuous women who are not completely out of their minds? I don't know about completely out of their minds, but they certainly. Um, you know, like I would say that there might be some mental health issues in many cases that uh, need to be addressed in in that area. But that's has that's a societal thing, right? Like, so yes, um, crazy women might choose to do that because sane women see that, oh, you know, I can like my life's going to be better if I choose not to in, um, enter into that behavior. But there, are, you know, there's all kinds of destructive behaviors for men too. It's just a d destructive behavior. I think Look, that I've, I've engaged in a good deal of promiscuity myself and had disastrous outcomes with it. I mean, there's a there's a there's article risk up on my involved. website about it. But. I mean, certainly there's risk involved. But I think to, you know to suggest that it's somehow bad for a woman to express her sexuality is you know that's not a there's no problem with expressing somebody. her sexuality yeah. is not a bad thing. But. All right. And having sex isn't necessarily a bad thing either. And having it more often than you do isn't a bad thing either. 855 450 free. If you could choose any school in the country to earn your college degree and be on your way to a better life, would you choose one the Wall Street Journal recognizes as producing some of the best qualified graduates? Or one the Princeton Review ranks as a leader in undergraduate education? Or maybe one the U.S. News and World Report names among the most innovative schools in the country? Now, you don't have to choose. At Arizona State University, we want to help you learn to thrive in life. At ASU Online, we offer over 100 graduate and undergraduate programs on your time and schedule. You receive the exact same curriculum, degree, and prestigious faculty as the on-campus students, and we're universally recognized as one of the innovators in online learning technologies. For information, call 1-800-595-9736. U.S. News & World Report ranked ASU in the top 10 best places to earn an online degree. So learn to thrive with ASU Online. Call today at 1-800-595-9736. That's 1-800-595-9736. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Affordable health insurance was the promise of Obamacare, but for many, the government mandate caused more problems than it solved. And I want to tell you about a truly affordable alternative, Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare bypasses doctor and hospital panels, giving you the freedom to choose. 100% coverage up to $1 million per year per occurrence who includes dental, vision, pharmacy, and holistic care. Call 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993. 1-800-714-6993 today. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbrich's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends, share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% 
of all funds raised go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash freeross. And don't forget freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. We're back. More Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we've been discussing a ridiculous story over on Jezebel about the uh, temperatures in offices being evidence of a patriarchy, which is absolutely absurd. But we can continue that discussion if you'd like to do that. Also, in the news, there's uh, another, I guess, an upgrade to Tor coming, sort of an alternative to it, a high-speed Tor alternative. Uh, maybe if we get the chance, we'll tell you a little bit about that as well. Uh, don't forget to check out Chris on his website, ChristopherCantwell.com. There's blogs, which are posted fairly often, and you're also doing Radical Agenda, Chris, which is your weekly two-hour uh podcast live streamed and then podcast audio yeah show. we we do it live on youtube and then it goes up on itunes and stitcher and the traditional rss out outlets and um and of course we do it uh we do it every friday and sometimes during the week so if you go over to christophercantwell.com slash subscribe you will find out when we do the off schedule episodes and keep up to date with all of my wacky antics christophercantwell.com let's go to your calls and thoughts we've got anon calling from anonymous you're on free talk live Hi, uh, I saw your uh, Twitter post, which was basically like, are you a socialist? Ask yourself these questions, depending on what your answer. And uh, I have been found myself working at a nursing home where uh, I've been in food service my whole life, and I'm horrified by the conditions and the quality of the food. And the thing is, I'm working for an evil corporation. Let's call it Odexo, say, wink, wink, <laughs> big, big Latin. And that's and, what Odexo, uh, say, they, means. Uh, they got the contract after uh, – Amarac, whatever, the, the one that just lost all those prison contracts for serving tainted food. Hmm. Anyway, these oh people are getting billed about $10 per meal. They have they get billed for 31 meals per month, so they have to show up in the dining room. Yet they're spending about $2 on food, mm -hmm. and they have all these people making just over minimum wage, cooking the food that tastes terrible, that, that really is very low quality. A lot of these people, the only sustenance they get is from – this dining room, which is being run at a profit. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So maybe not everything should be profit-driven. I don't want the people making my elderly, senile grandmother's lunch to be wanting to squeeze every single dime out of it. Maybe they should just be doing it because it needs to be done, and we're going to try and break even at the end of the year. Whatever, any movement money we say, we're going to put back into it. No. Well, it I'll, t I'll tell you what. If you, if you want things to not be driven by profit motive, then just head on down to Venezuela or head on over to Greece and see how well that's working out for them. Profit driven is what leads people to try to succeed and provide the best, uh, you know, value to customers. It seems to me like you are in a heavily uh, these, you know, nursing homes and that sort of thing. Retirement homes are regulated industries in large part. It's it's a it's a, it's a medical services thing. Uh, you are talking about people who are getting paid minimum wage, which means that uh, they are being paid more than they probably should be paid, as a matter of fact, and it doesn't seem to be working out very well may i kind of clarify what i'm getting at real quick please sure. do it's that uh uh so the, they are running this organization to to make a profit the, the goal isn't feed the old people it's 
make a profit. Well, you don't like, get to the profit that's unless how you business works. Wait a minute, but you don't <laughs> get to the profit unless you satisfy your customers first. So if you don't feed the old people, you don't make the profit. So the product, the profit comes after you've done a good job. Now you, what you just you're need arguing, a better competition for this place that you're right. working for. What yeah. you're arguing is that this particular company isn't doing business in the way that you think would be the optimum way to do business. Now, why is it that somebody else can't just go and create a company and compete with them? Well, maybe it's government regulation. Maybe there are you know difficulties that have been put out there by these government bureaucrats in the supposed name of protecting the consumer that are actually protecting the consumer from having choices in the marketplace and leaving it up to these big mega corporations who no doubt about it are cutting corners that maybe they shouldn't be cutting maybe that's because they don't have enough competition in the marketplace to uh, you know to allow for a better uh, product and service but, but the big secret that nobody really yeah. wants to acknowledge here is that nobody's motivation is to feed old people. Nobody, nobody just, I'm going to go through all of this effort and expense to just feed old people. Like, not that's day not in how, and day out. That's not, how, that's not how the world works. I mean, the profit motive is how people are motivated to feed old people, to pave roads, to do all the different things that you want done. All of the technology that we're discussing this on with you right now is all driven by profit motive and all medical care and everything else. All these people are saying we've got to take- I don't necessarily take, agree. Wait, I, I, I don't necessarily agree. But people say we've got to take the profit motive out of X, Y, and Z, and all that does is like to try to make people shuffle it around and hide their profit motive. Everybody's trying to make a buck. May I? Uh, the thing that that I think you're missing is that the, a lot of these people they're not customers. They're they're basically inmates in an institution, and they don't have any choice. They don't have any agency. They don't have any way to choose a better alternative. And what I'm saying is have profit motive in the marketplace, but maybe certain things shouldn't be profit driven. If they don't have agency, then we're not talking about, uh, you know, sort of profit driven stuff any, anymore. You, what you're talking about are people that are um, because they're so poor, um, they don't have any choice in which nursing home they're in. Well, the thing is, that, like in the nursing home, there's only one dining room. And yes, I get that, but around. I mean there are more than one nursing home. So if you if you're paying for your nursing home, and uh, um, then you can choose which one you want to go to. I mean, a lot, some of these people are in there and they have no alternative. But what I, what bothers well, me? Hold on. Okay, listen, so listen. Low. Hold on. I've been to institutions that um, have dining halls. They're called schools. If those dining halls were so bad, then I could have chosen to go to a different school, right? And uh, I mean, this is true well, with you college. Pack your own lunch. You could pack your own lunch, but obviously these people can't. So I mean, right. we're talking about an inst uh, we're talking about people who either can or can't choose to leave, and I'm trying to discern whether that's the case. Because if people can't leave, then we're talking about government being the problem. If we're talking be about people who can leave, then they don't consider the dining hall a bad, a big enough issue to pack up and move, or their or their kids don't, or they're too crazy, um, you know, too demented to be able to to inform their kids. Uh, some of these people, they're, 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 they are they are being warehoused. That's what it really is. But and are you talking about? Are you talking about like? Uh, so I had a, a grandfather who had to go into like a, a a VA home or something like that, right? And so this is a government agency, right? And sure, um, there are there are private companies who are providing services like food to that government agency. Are you talking about a government run like retirement home or something? Well, I mean, it's being paid for by by benefits. Okay. All these people are on social security. So, so yes so, and no. So listen, what happened what happened, the reason that people are getting screwed over is because they tried to take the profit motive out of it already. When you're selling things to the government, the government has this really ridiculous habit of overpaying for lousy service because they are not uh, you know, spending their own money and incentivized to do things in a way that rational people do when they're trying to create an efficient allocation of resources. If you're sit if you're talking about a situation where the government is paying for it and these people don't have any choice, what you are talking about is the, exactly what happens when you try to remove the profit motive. From that something. is a socialist system. I'm saying that in this dining hall, if I was one of the old old people, I'd rather have the kitchen being run as a nonprofit 
trying to provide the best service. So do it. So create a nonprofit uh, kitchen organization that can outcompete the existing profiteers. Well, I think what you'll find is is that this government, um, the the government agency that runs this uh, nursing home that we're talking about here, really wants to do business with this other dining uh, hall company, probably because of kickbacks or oh, yeah. a big likes big or a variety of collus- uh, sort of uh, factors that cause collusion. What you'll find is is that something besides the profit motive, competition in the market place is what the problem is hey anon think, I, go ahead what i'm saying is that the company that, that's running this dining hall is getting away with doing the bare minimum possible yep. to not get fired look the, and my plan the is the bureau in the soviet gonna, union was very wealthy everybody else lived on cans of beans that they waited in line for i understand how socialism works Anand, thanks for the call tonight. I wish we'd had more time for the discussion I called in the the, uh, the last segment, unfortunately. But, you know, there was something I did want to say. Obviously, profit motive is certainly a high level of a motivator for a lot of people in business. But I think that there's also the motivating factor of I love to do this, right? So if you look at uh, people running a restaurant, for instance, there really isn't that much profit in running a, a restaurant. Certainly in the early days, there's not much at all. It's very, very small margins is what you can make uh, doing that kind of business. And everybody that's ever been in the restaurant business that I've ever known has always told me the same thing, and that is that you've got to love to serve people food. That it's just a it's something that you love so you much. You can that love you're serving to, people food yeah. at the restaurant you don't own. The reason that you go and you own the restaurant yeah. is either A, you think you can do it better than the guy sure. you worked for. Uh, B, you are one of these unemployable jerks like me who cannot mm-hmm. work for other people. Yep. Or C, you want to make a buttload of money. I'm None not of saying these they things don't are particularly laudable reasons. I'm not saying they don't want to make money. I'm just saying to say that's the only motivating factor as to why someone goes into a business is not true. Let okay? me read this. Uh, Maybe it's me- the motivating factor of somebody who goes in and vacuums out porta potties for a living because, you know, it would be hard to imagine somebody really loves that. But there could be somebody out there who really loves that. And I think that, you know, you want to get into a business with very, very low profit margins like the restaurant business, you got to really love it in the first place. Well, you can go see the meme he's talking about, the You Might Be a Socialist meme. It's laughable. It's at uh, facebook.freetalklive.com. It's the most recent post. Um, it's absolute, utter drivel. Okay. Apparently, he took it pretty seriously. I haven't seen it, so uh, check it out at Free Talk Live on the Facebooks. We'll see you tomorrow night, freetalklive.com, ChristopherCantwell.com as well. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 17, 1980, Ronald Reagan accepted the nomination for president at the Republican National Convention in Detroit and delivered a speech in which he boldly promised that during his presidency, someone would body slam Andre the Giant. While admitting that the road would be long and hard and that it might take as long as seven years and two WrestleManias to get there, the former California governor vowed that under his administration, somebody Perhaps Ricky the Dragon Steamboat or a hulked up Hulk Hogan would grab hold of the 500 pound behemoth and send his massive body smashing to the mat. The Republican nominee also went on to promise that by the end of his first term, Joni would marry Chachi, hair metal would achieve mainstream airplay, and Shelley Long would successfully make the leap from television to film. This is the Onion News Network. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, July 27th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,090 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $290. Antiwar.com reports, since the late 2001 U.S. invasion and occupation of the country and the subsequent creation of the current Afghan government, the Taliban moved from the role of a mostly recognized government to insurgency. With fledgling peace talks in Pakistan and China, the Taliban may be preparing to undergo another transition. 13 plus years into the war, the Taliban holds considerable territory across Afghanistan and continues to command support across several regions. Analysts thus believe that any deal resulting from these talks is going to have to include some significant power sharing with the Taliban if it is going to end the fighting. Afghanistan's been in more or less non-stop war for decades now since the Soviet invasion, and at the end of every round there must come a reckoning in which enemies come to some sort of uneasy settlement of the ongoing conflict. The difficulty of this is reflected in how many times Afghanistan has gone through peace deals only to return to fighting soon thereafter. The U.S. imposed system in Afghanistan, though, seems like it's going to have to get used to the idea of the Taliban playing the role of a political party with significant regional influence and right in the midst of the political mainstream. Afghanistan's existing government is already heavily divided, and the Taliban's unity could allow it to consolidate more power in future elections if it participates. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. UPI reports in a rare weekend session, the U.S. Senate made a couple of moves on Sunday to keep President Barack Obama's signature health care law on the books and resurrect a federal credit agency after it remained dormant for 30 days. The Export-Import Bank of the United States operated through June 30th, but shut down after that. Sunday's move in favor of reopening the agency is expected to send the proposal to a far more divided House of Representatives this week. The Senate voted 67 to 26 on the measure, which was attached to a three-year highway and infrastructure bill expected to pass this week. The Senate, though, still needs to finalize a final version of the proposal reauthorizing the bank's reopening. If the bank does reopen, analysts believe it will be a major blow to conservative Republicans who believe the agency is an unnecessary element of the federal government's fiscal apparatus. Jay Timmons, president of the National Association of Manufacturers, said, with more than 60 export credit agencies in enabling our foreign competitors to seize opportunities away from workers, it's critical that Congress restores this important tool for American exports. It wasn't clear Sunday whether the House would take up the issue, as it may not even bring the proposal to the floor for a vote. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports firefighters made progress Sunday against three wildfires burning in Montana and California, aided by cooler temperatures overnight. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection set ablaze in the Sierra foothills near Lake Tahoe in California was burning rapidly toward the north despite calming overnight, and evacuation orders remained in place for several communities. Southwest of Sacramento, near California's storied wine country, the 6,900-acre rag fire was 60% contained, and evacuation orders had been lifted. In Montana, a wildfire at Glacier National Park along the west side of St. Mary Lake was 20% contained on Sunday morning. The so-called Reynolds Fire covered about 3,100 acres at mid-morning Sunday, prompting the closure of an 18-mile section of Going to the Sun Road in the park near the St. Mary Visitor Center. However, officials said that a majority of the park was unaffected by the fire and remained open to the public. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
you've looked outside recently, you've noticed that all dogs everywhere are running. Scientists can't explain why all over the world, dogs of every breed are running nonstop. I'm joined now by animal behavior expert, Dr. Charles Davenport. Charles, what can you tell us? All we know for sure is that the dogs are running fast. But we don't know why the dogs are running? There are a few reasons that dogs normally run. Because they're excited or scared, or they see something they want far away, or because they're happy. However, usually, they don't run at the same time or in the same direction.